planning school. I am so excited about tonight's webinar and to be back. I have missed you guys. It has been a little bit of a while since we've been here. Um, so welcome back to Lives with Tutor Athena Devon, me. Okay, I see the numbers going up that people are on. You guys, for those who have been with me um, in several webinars, you know what I like. As you come in the room, say hello, what your name is. If you already have your company name, state what your company name is and where you're from because I like to see where we are. Sometimes we have people from Ireland, from Switzerland, from Australia, from Canada, all throughout the United States. And I love to know who I'm talking to. So if you will, and let me make sure I can see your guys' comments. <gasps> hey, Carrie, that is one of my regulars. So good to see you, Carrie. Hi, Allegra, you guys let me know where you're coming from. Carrie, you don't have to tell me because I know. Um, and I'm gonna do this just to kind of get you guys um, in the habit of responding and engaging with me. You guys know my energy comes from you. So the more I see you type, the more energized I get to get going. You're in Kansas, you're not that far from me. When I say that not, not that far, I, I am a road trip type of girl. So as long as something is within 20 hours of a drive, I'll go. Hi, Veronica from Cincinnati. Hey, Shantae, hey girl, there's Elsie, hi. Okay, you guys, yay, you're coming in, you're coming in. Um, Hello, is it, okay, I, I always, okay, Shola Ju? Shalajou. Ooh, tell me if I said that right or wrong. <laughs> if I said it wrong, put the phonetics for me. I like to say people's name right. Okay, you are Elsie. You are London, Canada. Oh, that's awesome. I love having people from out of the United States. It's so exciting. I know everyone's in different time zones, so I'm going to say good morning, good afternoon, and good evening because I have no idea where you guys are. Mine is good evening because it is 5 p.m. Hey, Brittany. How are you? Okay, you guys, if you haven't noticed why I'm so hyper and so energetic. Hey, Tina from Denver. Hi, lovely. Um, is because I love this topic. You know, you guys, we've done a lot on the back end business side. We've done a lot on the corporate side. We've done a lot on the running of the business, the starting the business. Um, we've done a lot on the planning side, but I know many of you guys are looking to be designers, florists or planners and designers. And you, you kind of want to have something for yourselves. And so I'm so excited about tonight about talking about design. So if you're currently a design student with QC Event Planning School, this is definitely one that you want to check into because this is what you're learning in your course. If you are not a student with QC Event Planning School, or you are a student with QC Event Planning School, but you're not enrolled in the event design course, but you're interested in design, this is the place for you tonight. I tried. I know I did try. <laughs> I really want to get it right though. Okay. Shola Ju. I'm still saying it wrong. I just feel like I am. Hey, Marcia. How are you? Candice. I love that you did your name with a K. You're currently with QC for corporate event planning. Awesome. I know that means that you're watching Alyssa, who is with the event corporate side. And I love, love, love her. I watch her lives too. Hey, Polita. Oh, I'm seeing all my regulars coming out. I'm getting so excited. Okay, you guys, so before we get started, I have a couple announcements that I want to get out at the very, very, very beginning um, because they're important. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I thought I, I did put my phone on do not do not disturb, but I guess I need to change the settings because I just had a phone call come through um, and it was my mom, <laughs> but I'll call my mama back. Oh, speaking of moms, uh, happy Mother's Day to all the mommies on here. I know the actual technical national holiday for Mother's Day was on a Sunday, but we all know as moms, every day is Mother's Day. So if you are a mompreneur, a mom, a business woman who is a mom, happy Mother's Day to you. I know I enjoyed my Mother's Day, so I hope you guys did too. Okay. So the first announcement I want to go uh, talk about, uh, is it your first time, Veronica? Hey, Veronica, how are you doing? Um, I'm just going to let you know right now, get a piece of paper, get a pen, get some notes. It's going to be a lot of stuff. I am very high energy and I like a lot of engagement. So welcome, welcome for your first time. Hi, Picos. Um, or is it Naya? 
Nea from Tulare, Cal- is it Colorado or California? I can't tell if this O or A. Okay, you guys, so I'm going to make first a uh, couple of announcements, then we're going to go into the rules for the live, and then we're going to get started into all the juicy, 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 juicy stuff. Okay, so first announcement. Thank you, Allegra. Um, first, hey, Nikki. What's up, girl? <laughs> I was, Nikki and I have been talking for the past two days, so hey, Nikki. Okay, you guys, so this is the first announcement I want to make, and I know you can't really see it because this whole digital on digital thing, but... This is a time-sensitive one, so I want you to write this down if this applies to you. And QC of Planning School will put the link um, in the description and pin it as a comment so you guys can get to it so I don't have to repeat it. There is a special that ends, ends, E-N-D-S. It ends at midnight tonight. So you might need to stay up tonight and make sure you get this done. I'm so excited that this is their special offer because this shows that they care about us people who have life happen, have bills, have things that happen in a constant situation. And we just like things to be a little bit more affordable without um, stopping our tracks and going in the direction that we want to go. So ends today you can't see that but in big bold red it said it ends today as in midnight eastern standard time understand that it's midnight eastern standard time so if you're in central like i am that means you have so 11 p.m because at that time it is midnight on eastern standard time but you guys the to to become a student with qc event planning school and there's a whole bunch of courses that i'll list in a minute but um, when you're a student with QC Event Planning School, there's a couple of options that you can choose to get started. You can either pay um, everything all up front because you're just ready to go and get geared, or they have an option where you can make monthly payments and installments. And I love that they have this offer because not everyone is financially able to put a big lump sum of money up front. Um, a lot of us like the monthly thing because we can budget it in management better, especially for us mamas or single mamas. <laughs> Um, So you only have to have $79 to get started. $79. $79. Let's talk about this real quick. You only need $79 to start to change your life by giving yourself a career, not a job, not a hobby, but a career that creates a lifestyle for you. Can get started for $79. Um, why am I saying $79 is so exciting? Okay, you can go into Walmart or Target or Ross to get one item that won't change your life and leave out spending $150 to $200. Type amen if you, if you know what I'm talking about. If you're one of the people that go into Walmart or Target to get like milk or juice, but you walk out spending about $100 plus on things you didn't really need, you just visually saw it, and then after a week, you're wondering what the heck did you spend $100 on at Walmart or Target or Ross? Put amen, Nikki's with me, amen. Sarah's with me, amen. Carrie Ann is with me, amen. Lovely Yes is amen. Polita is speak, exactly. Okay, you guys, so we go and spend this money on things that we just instantly love because we're in a mic. I like to call us a microwave generation. We want everything now, 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 now. Okay, well, if you want something now, 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 start the process to get your education so you can create a foundation and a structure for a career and lifestyle. You guys, I am an alumni of QC Event Planning School. I started um, QC Event Planning School, I want to say seven years ago now. And I still, to this day, in my running of my business, use the templates and the education I got from QC of Planning School. To this day, when I bring on new team members, the information I give them and the things that they use, the budget sheet that came from QC of Planning School, we use for all of our brides. The templates on oh, so many things, I still use to this day my color wheel. I still use all of it. So it is very valuable. And what I love about QC Event Planning School, for those who are not students, is the type of support that this school gives you is totally amazing. I have to do an entire separate video about why I recommend QC Event Planning School, so I'm not going to do it right now. Otherwise, the entire hour will be about why you should be a student. So anyways, back to what I was saying. The special is $79. QC just pinned the link. For a limited time, as in limited, 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 you only have till midnight tonight, Eastern Standard Time. 
And then it's not just that you only have to do $79 to start. They lowered the installment payments, you guys. So they're giving you a break up front and throughout because they extended the installment payment period. <laughs> like y'all, y'all just don't understand. I'm so excited that they did this because hello, they care about you guys. They care about your pockets, your budget, and they know that you're still living a life. So they're making your career accessible. So that basically now means you have absolutely no excuse. Because if I had someone tell me today, I'm going to have to wait to get started, then that means you're not going to Walmart for the next month that you say you're going to wait to get it. Because going to Walmart or Target, you're going to spend $100 that will do nothing for you in your life, but maybe give you some food for two days or a shirt that you could have waited to buy for another month or some shoes that you could have paid for from your first check from your business, right? So y'all need to jump on this like ASAP, seriously, $79 that will give you a huge return on your investment way over rather than someone giving you a compliment on something cute that you bought from Ross, okay? So enroll tonight, you guys see that countdown? You have six hours, 15 minutes, and 50 some odd seconds, get on it tell them athena devon sent you and that i told you get on it you guys it has changed my life i have been a um owner of my business for six years six and a half years and has changed the life for me and for my kids and so i am a huge huge advocate of getting certified and educated um again sorry you guys for the calls i really thought i put i did put this on do not disturb i didn't change the settings okay so that's the first announcement now let's get right into my second announcement and then we're gonna get to all the juicy stuff second announcement okay the second announcement is you guys really 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 want to pay attention to this one because i have a surprise for you, you guys ready are you guys ready for the surprise? say ready if you're ready for the surprise i'm about to tell you this is a special one this is a special one. So if you're ready to hear why the heck this one over other ones are so important, say ready. When I see people say ready, I'm going to give it. I'm going to give it. Because if you guys aren't ready, then I'll just maybe skip over what's so special about this one and just get started into that. And then you guys just might like miss it. So you guys, you guys know I love inter in interaction and engagement. So I know you're ready. Okay. Michelle is ready. Lovely is ready. Allegra is ready. Carrie is ready. Michelle said, I graduated my event planning course, best investment I did. Y'all give a round of applause to Michelle. Woo! She graduated, best investment, perfect. Okay, you guys are ready, 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 ready. Okay, so this is what is special about this one. Tonight is not going to be just tonight. Tonight is not only going to be taking notes and then seeing how you might be able to apply it. Okay, so here it is. Tonight is part one of a three-part series. But here's the best part, you guys. And the details are coming soon, so they're not, I'm not going to have it right now. Uh, QC will be putting out the exact details. But you have to pay attention to this one. When I say pay attention, go get a napkin, a paper, a pad, a sock, whatever you have with you. Write what I'm about to give you down as much as information as you can. If you can't get it all right now, come back and watch this live. It will be loaded up into the Facebook business page under the videos. But this one's gonna be really important. Let me tell you why. This is step one of a three part thing. So let me explain what it's gonna be. Tonight, I'm gonna give you guys the logistics, the structure, the information that you need to have in order to do what? Who can guess why? <gasps> do y'all wanna see? a live, in person, in a sense, virtual, in process, behind the scenes, actual style shoot. Baby, who wants to see that? Who wants to see how you would take what I'm going to give you tonight and see it in fruition in a style shoot? As in, I'm going to take you with me to the style shoot. I'm going to introduce you guys to the vendors. I'm going to show you the design. I'm going to break down every single element that we're going to talk about tonight. So let me tell you why the second reason is important for you guys to really pay attention. 
First reason is because I'm gonna take what I say tonight and then show you it live in person. Like the camera's going to be following with me. You guys will be zoomed in on the plate, zoomed in on the flowers. You guys will see me interview live with vendors that I work with. <gasps> I'm so excited. Okay, but that's only the first reason why you have to pay attention. Because uh, we're going to be, you. I need you to be able to pick up what you learned tonight and see how I did it, okay? But this is the main reason. Drum roll. I am working with QC Bit Planning School and hosting a design style shoe contest. Ah! Who loves the contest? Me! So it's a three part, you guys. Tonight's gonna be all about the information. The second one's gonna be all about going live with me behind the scenes on a style shoot. And then the third part is you get to enter in a contest hosted by me in collaboration with QC Event Planning School where there will be prizes. I'm not gonna give away the prize is yet. I'm gonna wait for QC to come out with the exact details so there is no confusion. But you guys should have one, two, and three right now, right? One is informational tonight. Number two is going to be the live behind the scenes style shoot. And number three will be the contest. So, did y'all do y'all have your sock, your paper, your napkin, the back of your shirt, the back of your hand? Do you have something to get all these notes? And if you don't, like I said, it's okay, but you need to put it on your calendar as in schedule time to come back and watch this live to get this information. You guys got it? Do one, two, three if you guys understand what, what one, two, and three is and that you're ready to get started. So I want to see one, two, three on the screen. One, two, three, and we're going to dive right in to the information for tonight. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Y'all, I'm hyped. Like, y'all have no idea. I'm really, really, really hyped about this. I'm so excited. Nikki is on it and ready. She is one, two, three. Yay, Nikki. Allegra at one, two, three. She's ready. Carrie Ann, she's ready. Miracle, hey, what's up, girl? One, two, three, lovely. One, two, three, Nora, hey, girl. Yes, Michelle, yes, we're ready. One, two, three, one, two, three. Lauren, one, two, three, Polita, yeah. Oh, yes, Polita, yes. One, two, three, Lauren, yes. Nora, one, two, three, okay, perfect. I think, uh, oh, another pretty name. Oh, oh, they're going so fast. Okay, you guys are ready. Okay, so let's get started. You guys are officially ready. I'm gonna bring the energy down now. I just had to show y'all how excited I am about this. Okay, so now that you guys are ready, let's put pen to paper and let's get the information out because this is the same information you're going to see me do and I'm gonna to wanna to see if you guys can figure out what of what I say tonight I implement and include in my uh, live style shoot. Okay, so here we go. There are gonna be three parts to tonight's, um, tonight's topic. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is what a style shoot is. Um, some people, you know, would think that they think they understand what a style shoot is, but I'm going to get a little bit more in depth on what a style shoot is because some people have a slightly different perception of what it is. So we're going to define what a style shoot is. Number two is we're going to talk about how you actually organize a style shoot. You guys know I don't like to give you information you can't actually take, apply, and do. I'm all about the action part. You can take notes all day long, but if it stays in that notebook, it doesn't make a change. It doesn't do anything for you. So the notes need to actually, you know, create an action plan. Hey, Brittany, she said one, two, three, perfect. So we're gonna talk about what a style shoot is, two, how to organize. If you guys see me looking down, I'm just looking at my notes. I have an outline because I wanna make sure I stay on topic and really give you guys these details. Okay, so number two is how to organize a style shoot. And the number three thing we're gonna talk about is how you actually use those photos in your business and, um, in your portfolio and I'm actually gonna tell you guys something a little different that you probably hear from most people but it works you guys know I like to give you stuff you haven't really heard before uh, so you can kind of compare the information so let's get started talking about what a style shoot is okay so there's several there's there's several types of style shoots the main one people think of when they think style shoot is that they grab a whole bunch of vendors together with this one concept and the goal is to get it published. Okay, that's, that's, that's the most popular one that you know of, which could be very beneficial and really good. But I wanna talk about some other style shoots that um, are, in my opinion, much more beneficial for your business 
than just the focus of getting published. Getting published is a great focus and you definitely want to have it and you want to have some publications. So I'm not saying don't go for the publications. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is don't wait for the publication. Don't focus on only the publication of a style shoot. I want to talk about the other style shoots. Let's talk about since most of you guys are brand new at your business, haven't even started yet, or looking to try and figure out how in the world do I do this? Well, you might not have all the resources at the very beginning to go get the photographer and the baker and, and all these other things that you need and you don't have that much money to dish out from the very beginning. So you start to get discouraged and you say, well, I'll do a style shoot after I start my business. I'll do a style shoot when I get my first year and I'll do it. So you do see what happens when your focus is only on getting published? What, do you, what, what is it you guys are saying to yourself? I'm brand new, so I can't get published yet. I don't have a website yet, so I can't get published yet. I don't have this. So do you see all that negative energy you're automatically putting into your mind because you're thinking large scale on this style shoot when a style shoot can be extremely, extremely small. So it doesn't matter if you're a planner. It doesn't matter if you, is that you, Nikki? See, that's what I mean. It doesn't matter if you're a planner, if you're a designer, if you're a baker, if you're a florist, you can do a style shoot. It's all in the way you do the presentation. A style shoot is not just about the visuals. A style shoot, if done correctly, is about the storyline and the visuals working together to create the publication. When um, publications and magazines are looking for things, they're not going to look at just your pictures. You can have stellar photos, but if they don't tell a story, you're not going to get published. And you spent all that time to, to get everything together and it, it, it doesn't do anything for you. And sometimes publications can take six to nine months. So let's talk about the other type of style shoot that a lot of people don't think about. Let's talk about your personal style shoot. The ones that you can put on social media and building your portfolio. So I want to talk about the small style shoot. When I first started my business, I had pictures of my work before I ever booked a client. How in the world did I do that? You're probably wondering. Okay, so the, you have to think outside the box. You guys know me. I'm all about getting creative and using what you, the resources you currently have. I'm going to give you my story, and then you can kind of see how it applies to you and what you can do. Um, and, oh, I forgot to say this before I got started. Before I get into that, let me really quick play this because I see what Shelby's saying. If you guys have questions, don't wait to the end to post them. Post them right now, but have the understanding I'm not going to stop to answer the question till the end. QC Event Planning School staff is on live with us. They're going to collect all the questions that they see come through and send me an email at the end, and then I'll go through it. So the faster you get your questions out, the faster I'm going to give you guys the questions. It'll be one of the first ones I do. So if you have a question, please do ask it. Just understand I'm not going to respond till the very end when we do questions and answers. But to answer that one question, yes, this will be posted for viewers to see after the video is done. It's a live. So you go to QC Event Planning School and you go to their videos and you will see this there. Okay. All right. So going on to what I was saying, let's talk about small style shoots and my story and then you can see how you do it. So my mother is a real estate agent in, um, in, in Dallas, Texas. Okay. Um, and she goes to a lot of homes that are either vacant or they're model homes or different things like that. So I use my mom as a resource to get my skill out there. There are many times that she would try and sell someone's house and it was absolutely empty. And so she wanted to add some decor, hello, decor in there to attract buyers. So this is what I did. I would put design and decor on the, ma the, the main places, on the mantle. Why would I design a mantle? I don't know. Aren't there venues that have fireplaces? Yes, there are a lot of venues that have fireplaces. So uh, if you have a fireplace in your house, what do you think I'm about to say? What do you think I'm about to say? Eh, yeah. So I would design a fireplace. I would design the dining room table because there's usually banquet tables at a venue. Um, I would design a, a, a patio table in the back with a centerpiece in the middle and plate settings going around. I played with different colors. I would match whatever color scheme was in the house. I would match it so when the photos went through. So I'm technically getting free pictures. Why? Because my mom has already hired a photographer to take pictures of the house to sell the house. So mm, I'm getting published before I actually even like really get started. There's a secret for you guys. Woo! 
find a realtor and work with them <laughs> and set up a dining table and a mantle for them. I'm telling you, it works wonders. But when I say small scale, I mean small scale, using what you have. Use your own home, use your own dining table, use your own backyard. I know a girl who cleaned out her garage and she put up drapes and she just kind of used clips to go on the garage door to make it look like a drape backdrop. And she grabbed a regular folding table she got from Walmart, sticks it out there and does these style shoots in her own garage. You don't need a venue every single time, you guys. I want to talk to you about all the levels of a style shoot, not just the ones that you popularly know about. So when you're first starting and you're trying to create a portfolio, start small. Start with a structure. Um, so it's when I, when I when I say small scale, and I'm 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 kind of jumping into what I'm going to talk about later about how you use your photos. So actually, I'm going to hold on that. But keep in mind what I'm just saying right now. You've got your large scale ones where you're getting all of your vendors together. You're going to a venue. You're you're getting the big, 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 big done. And then you have your small ones. And the small ones can be if you guys are setting up a table for a bridal show or, or a trade show or venue open house or something in your home. Those are smaller scale ones where you don't really have all of the vendors. And the focus is really just on what you're doing. Now, for those that are on here that are not designers, but you're planners, you can still work with either someone that you know is a florist that's trying to start their business. You still get a major benefit out of it, although you aren't actually doing the design. It's all in how you present, present design. What is design about? What's design about? Is it about just pretty? Is it just about the colors? Is it just about how luxe it is or how rustic it is? No. Design, and you guys who have been with me from the beginning know what I'm about to say. Design is all about the details. The details. Yes, Carrie Ann, which is in the presentation. So you as a planner are probably wondering how in the world do I build a portfolio? I'm not a florist and I'm not this. It doesn't take anything to go to your local Sam's Club, Costco's, Whole food markets or anything like that. Ask them to make a flower arrangement for you. Okay, they will because they're freelance. Get that. Put it on a table. Focus on the details. Focus on the layering that you do on the tables. Focus on how you set the silverware, how you set the glassware, how you set the entire table, what the entire concept was to begin with. What's the story of it? What was your inspiration? Why did you choose those colors? That is your story. So when people are reading this blog or this post that you did or this, this publication that you did, the visuals just become support for what you're describing versus you're describing becoming the support of the pictures. Okay, you gotta have both. But when you do that and they see that you know what you're doing, what is that what is what does that client get? They get that I can come to this person with a concept and they will be able to bring it together for me because she did it or he did it over here that I see. So do not count yourself out from style shoots just because you are a planner. For large style shoots, it's absolutely imperative to have a coordinator and planner. You're working with nine to 12 vendors trying to get them all in the location at the same time to get all their set up. You're almost planning a mini wedding, it's, it's, except you just don't have anyone getting married. But you still have to get everyone on a timeline. You still have to give all that information to the vendor. You still need insurances and contracts. You still have liabilities. You still have all those things. And so you're a major part of getting all those vendors together. So there's a huge benefit. So let's move into that part now. We talked about the different types of style shoots. You've got your large, you've got your small, you've got your, um, your, um, your uh, personal. So let's go into what the benefits of planning and coordinating a style shoot are. And I kind of talked about that, but it's, you get more of a benefit when you're the planner or coordinator than if you're just one of the vendors. And why am I boldly saying that? Here's the deal. When you've got a large style shoot where everyone's contracted to work together and there is the goal of getting it published, like I talked about, and you're going to get cited, you're going to get um, what they call tagged, or you're going to receive credit for doing that. They'll list planner in your company name, floors, company name, this, this, and this. But here is what you need to understand. When any of those vendors, 
any of those vendors repost this to their website or their blog or their so-and-so. So say I'm the baker that did the cake for this style shoot, but I post the entire thing on here and I move over the credit that you are the planner. Someone can come to me and say that they loved the cake, but they're going to say, well, 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 wh where did this come from? And where did this come from? And what about this? And how do I get this? And how do I get this? Me as a baker, I'm gonna be like, well, contact this planner. She's the one that put this all together. I just brought the cake. So you not only got the publication, but now you're getting referrals and words from your vendors because they don't know what you did. They just know that they received a phone call or an email and asked to be part of this and where to be and what time, but they didn't put anything together. They just brought their particular part. You as a planner and coordinator put the whole thing together. You know every bit and piece of this style show. You know what time someone's coming. You know what colors they're using. You know exactly the sketches of what they're doing. You know what angle it's supposed to be at. You know what time the photographer's gonna shoot a specific detail. You know all of their names, phone numbers, contacts, email addresses. You know their website. You know everything about everybody involved. As just the baker, or as just the photographer, or as just as the videographer, or just the florist, you don't know all that information. Nah, you don't have it. You don't have it. So the huge other benefit is you have now built relationships with all these vendors that are involved in this one style shoot. So you went from thinking you're only doing a style shoot to now opening up nine to 12 new vendor relationships, which means you just opened yourself up nine to 12 new referring channels, referring, let me say again, referring channels to you and your business. So not only is it going on your website and that publication and your social media is going on the nine to 12 other vendors that are out there that you're not getting all of this marketing with, all of this advertising, but the most important part is that you built those relationships and you showed them proof of how you coordinate plan, work with the details, your relationship with them. And so they never have had to have a wedding or event with you to refer you. Why? Because they already got a sample of how you do something. So if you flawlessly get this done and you get it right and you do everything that you say they're going to do, they're going to be like, man, if, if they're like that with just a style shoot, I can't imagine what they're like with a wedding or event. Let me go ahead and refer them. Mm, yeah. So the, the benefit of building vendor relationships that is amazing when it comes to a style shoot. The other benefit is the known benefit you guys already know of, getting publications and getting your SEO up on your website because you can do backlinks and all those kinds of things. That's another benefit. The second benefit is practice. A lot of people don't think of a style shoot as practice, but a style shoot is perfect to use to do what you want to do. When you're working with a client, you don't do what you want to do. You do what the client wants. I am in Texas, so a bunch of my brides want rustic weddings. I personally am a glam and glints antique type of girl, so I would prefer to do all of those kinds of things. But my clients, because I'm in Texas, are rustic. So they want the branches, the mason jars, the burlap, and, and all those kinds of things. So I use style shoots to represent what I want my brand to be, what I know my skill set is at, what my colors are, what color combinations I feel would be best for a wedding. So you use style shoots to practice your skill set, number one, trying something new, to expand and grow your skill set. You um, use it for practice to really get out the message that you want so you, you can attract your client, your client, your client, clientele, your client. I cannot talk to you guys. Your target client. Okay. So my target client, the, the bride I really, really want is the eclectic bride is the bride who knows what she wants, but she can't exactly communicate it. And she can't see it on any picture on Google or Pinterest or anywhere else. So I have to create it for her. That's my ideal type of client. My ideal type of client isn't the bride that knows exactly what they want and they, 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 they're wanting the Gabrielle Union wedding or they want the Beyonce wedding 
or they want the Faith Hill wedding and they just give you those pictures and say, I want that. Like, that's not my bride. That's not my bride because my brides are all about personalization, customization, and, 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 and individuality, not copying and repeating what's already been done. So I use a style shoot to put out the types of events I want to do. So when someone sees that, they're like, oh, I want to do something like that. And I'm like, yes, we can do it because I've already started it. So we can kind of go along the lines. So there's a benefit of vendor relationships and starting to grow your vendor database and getting your referral channels open up. There's the benefit of reaching your target client. And there, there's the benefit of getting the practice you need to build your skill set because you're not going to start all the way up here. You know, you build up to what you want to do. When I first started my design, I was not touching flowers, not touching it. I, I was building relationships with florists. And I would come up with the entire design and I would provide like the bases, like the vases, the chargers, the plates, the silverware, the glasses, all the kind. And all I needed them for was just the actual fresh flower. So they would put the flower arrangement together in the base, the vase or whatever that's mine together. And I would create the design concept. So they were, they were doing freelance work for me. And that's what I started doing. But now six to seven years in, I am taking florist courses to where I'm going to start doing all those. And I still don't know if I'm going to actually handle bouquets and stuff like that because that's just another, that's a full job all by itself. But anyways, the whole point is I've been using my style shoots to practice doing flower arrangements and those huge garlands and, and all these big things that I see that I really want to know how to do. I use style shoots to practice it because I want to practice on a bride, right? I want to practice on a style shoot. So you should have everything for number one. Number one, types of style shoots. Okay, we've got your large for publication type of style shoots. You've got your personal one, you know, where you can just do a fireplace or your own dining room table um, or your small ones where it's just maybe you and one or two other vendors um, that you can put a small table together um, or you can do uh, just a backdrop. It would be like a sweetheart table. Like maybe you can focus on doing just a sweetheart table or you can focus on just doing a dessert table or you can focus on just doing one table. You don't have to do like a whole bunch of areas and stuff like that. So just understand, don't wait to do this big old style shoot to get published. It takes six to nine months just to even get some feedback from that. Start really small. Get a style shoot out in a week or two and start using those photos. And at the end, we'll talk about how you can use those photos. So that's what you really wanna focus on as you're in the beginning of your business. And as you're growing, then yes, get out them publications, get them. Now, if you have opportunity to get into a, a publication, go for it. All I'm saying is don't focus and hesitate just waiting on those things, okay? So that's number one, you guys. Let's move on to number two. Number two is how to organize a style shoot. And by the way, you guys, I love all the questions that are coming in. I'm not ignoring you. For those who are just coming in, ask all your questions right now. I'll answer them at the end during a question and answer. Okay, so number two is how you actually organize a style shoot. So I see some of these questions coming in now, so it looks like I'll get ready to actually answer them right now. So the first thing I want to talk about is how you actually find the vendors um, what type of vendors you would actually use at the style shoot um, and like, you know, which ones are really important and which ones <laughs> you don't really need to have at a style shoot. So um, let's start with how you find vendors. So first, before I talk about finding vendors, let me tell you this caution message that I have. Do not. And I see this all the time. Do not just contact any old vendor. Don't, don't just contact someone just for the sake of contacting someone. Don't work with someone who's just starting out just for the benefit of thinking you can help them. Let me tell you why. Your company brand is at stake. No matter what you do in your business, at all times, you need to keep your company, your message, your purpose, your vision, your brand in mind. You will not catch me doing a style shoot for something I don't, I don't, I, I don't want to be a part of or, or working with a vendor that I know I don't ever want to work in. Like I have a list of vendors that my company will never work with because I don't want my company name to get that same reputation or go down. Cause unfortunately there are some people in our industry that are not professionals, although they say that they are professionals. You have to be very careful when you're choosing your vendors. Okay. You have to do the research past beautiful pictures. I'm going to say this caution one more time, this caution statement one more time. Put huge caution statement on your notes. Do not just contact any type of vendor 
just because they either have pretty pictures or because they're brand new and you think you can benefit each other and help each other. Um, no, 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 no. Venus said it. No, absolutely not. No, you have to first understand what your purpose, vision, goal, and brand is for your company. You might not have your company started already, but you can at least have a vision and mission statement, know where you want to go. I've said it earlier. My company is all about personalization, customization, and individuality of my couples along their journey to saying there are due. So it's basically all about their relationship. Every detail is going to be them and their relationship. Thank you, Allegra, for repeating that. No, 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 don't do that. So I'm not going to go and do a, a, a style shoot that's just about luxury beautifulness. No. That doesn't do anything for me because my target client is is not the luxury bride. Okay, I don't I don't. That's not my target client. It's not. I work. You have to know what bride you're going for. If you're gonna go for a luxury bride, don't go for a luxury bride just because of the money. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, there is a huge difference, huge difference when you start working with luxury brides. There's a different level of expectation. There's a different type of expectations on your own life they expect. There's a whole bunch of stuff. I have celebrity clients. I've worked with several several celebrity clients. I still have some. Not my go-to. Not my go-to. I'll work with one or two a year. That's it. I've told a few no. Because that's not that I, I'm a mom. I have kids at home. And I just don't have that many hours to focus only on you and your life. And I'm my own. That's just my take on that. You guys see my little daughter right there. Yeah. Baby, I'm in a meeting right now. Okay, so you know, hold on. Okay. What? Oh, okay. Thank you. My daughter's bringing me water. <laughs> um, so it, there's just, uh, there's just this lot. You have to structure your entire business absolutely different when you do that. So here's my thing. I'm specifically saying this to say, don't go do a style shoot just because you want this luxury looking, um, uh, picture on your website. Thank you, sweetheart. Um, you want to do what is going to curate and attract your target bride. Sorry, excuse me a second, guys. Can I also watch TV? No. Um, my, my daughter is, is so sweet. She brought me some water. She knows when I'm on these calls, I get to go in. Excuse me. Okay, you guys. So when you're doing a, a style shoot, make sure it matches where you are in your company and in your brand. Now, am I, am I saying if you're brand new, don't go for the pretty? There's nothing wrong with being pretty. But if that's not the style of bride that you want, don't go that route, okay? I am going to go for an eclectic design, a color scheme you may not have thought to put together. I'm going to go for personalization. So when I do a style shoot, I actually use a bride and a groom's name. I actually use pictures of either a past couple or a couple I'm, I'm working with now or, or something. I use pictures because what is my brand all about? personalization, individuality. I'm going to have custom made items on the table. Things that you pretty much can only get from me and my company unless you know who my vendor is. Why? Because I'm about personalization, customization, and individuality for my couples. So that those are the details I'm going to focus on when I do a style shoot on the type of charger I'm using. It's not when you just go buy from Michaels or Hobby Lobby or DH Gate or anything. It's when I had custom made because I have carpenters in my business that make them for me. Um, I have metal workers. Um, my invitations are going to have specific details that are specifically about that bride and groom. So when I'm looking for vendors, I'm looking for the vendors that match what my mission and what my brand is about. I'm going to look for an invitation designer. I'm not going to go to Shutterfly or Minted or one of these other things. Because you're picking a template, right? It's not totally custom. You can do some custom stuff, but I want custom, custom, custom. Like if I have a bride and groom where a butterfly is significant to them, I want some butterfly imitations. Not an imitation that has a butterfly on it, but a laser cut butterfly that's the invitation. Why? Because that's what my company is about, the customization and detail. So I'm going to research and look for an invitation designer that's local, or maybe sometimes not always local, that can create specifically what I am working, looking for, that I can build a vendor relationship and connection with that we can work with in the future, because if I have a bride that wants this, I can connect with this person. I'm going to look at their reviews. 
I'm going to look at their website. I'm going to look how active they are. Are they currently doing a lot of work? Are they not doing a lot of work? Um, do they have really great products, but horrible customer service and horrible reviews? I'm going to see what their turnaround time is. How quick are you going to respond to this email that I'm going to send where I'm just kind of inquiring? So you guys, there's a process. When you're looking for vendors, you don't automatically say, I want to work with you. You put out there that you're inquiring about if they might possibly have interest in this concept that you have, that you're in the planning stages and you're looking for a few of you bakers, a few photographers, a few this, and you're going to be making your decisions within whatever amount of time, right? You don't automatically say, I want to work with you, right? You have to get a communication dialogue started so you can have an idea of, can you really work with this person? Are they being rude to you? Because if they're being rude to you and cutting you off in the beginning, why would you want to work and highlight someone who's going to do the same thing to your bride or your client? Mm, not. So when you're looking for vendors, you have to do the research. You want to make sure the end result product is going to look like what you want. You're going to need to make sure that the dialogue and there can actually be a vendor relationship between you and this vendor you're going to work with. You want to check what your reputation is like. See if anyone that you know has already kind of worked with them. Don't base it on just Googling florist in Cincinnati and finding, you know, clicking the one that's at the top because they could have paid for that top one. That's all I'm saying. So you need to do your, re your, re your relationship. You need to do your research on this. So um, that's how you get your, your, you pick the type of vendor is you need to make sure that they mirror what your brand is for your company. Now, what's, the, what's most important to have at a style shoot? Um, and the least, I'm gonna start with the least. You don't need really a caterer at your style shoot. You can have one, eh, not really important. Let me tell you why. When brides are looking at pictures, they're pretty much looking at what they're going to receive back from their photographer of their wedding. So most photographers do not take pictures of the reception when brides are, I mean, when brides, when guests are eating, right? When guests are eating, they're not taking pictures of guests eating. So you don't ever get the pictures of food on an actual plate. I mean, you do every now and then, but that's not what you really see. You just see the plate setting. You see the silverware, the charger, the placemat, the plate, the napkin, the menu card, the program. You see all those details. So I wouldn't go out trying to find every single vendor that you would typically have for a wedding. You don't need a DJ for a style shoot. I mean, unless you just want music playing in the background to have some fun, you don't need a DJ. So you don't need a DJ. You don't need a caterer. Um, I, I wouldn't focus on, on, um, your, your superlative, um, is what I like to call them superlative vendors. Like, um, you know, you've got the people that offer coffee bars and, um, popsicles and, and all those kinds of things. Now, those are great if you're doing a niche type of style shoot. Like if I'm doing a, uh, a, a summer backyard style shoot, then maybe I do want the popsicle vendor out there. But it's, it's only if you're getting really specific. If you're just doing a general style shoot to get out and get published, then those are not the vendors you want to like really heavily go after. You have to, have to, have to, have to obviously have a photographer and an amazing one at that, okay? Because this, the way they take the pictures, is going to reflect you and your work. You can have gorgeous design and have a photographer and butcher it. They, they can butcher your entire design because they don't take it at the right angle. They don't take it with the right lighting. And so something that's supposed to be light and airy looks dark and shadowy. Um, so you, you have to be really careful. So you have to have a photographer. Another great thing to have, especially in today's generation and the way SEO and marketing is going now, videography, I'm going to put at one of the tops with the photographer to have. Let me tell you what the benefit of having a videographer is, is that videographer can take video of this couple that's your models when you see movement and that's what people get into and then they can capture you behind the scenes putting this style shoot together so planners who are not designers this is perfect for you to have a videographer because they'll capture you talking to the vendors putting people in place you know if you're you're, you're specific you know making sure the plate is is where it's supposed to be and the, the knife is facing the direction that they're supposed to be facing like they can get you know the photographer can get pictures of you in action too but to see an actual video of you fixing the, the model bride's dress or putting in, putting the boutonniere on, things that you would do on a wedding, they're hugely beneficial. So photographer, videographer. Videographer used to be something I would say that you can possibly, but now with the way things are, mm, I'd say that's what you really need to have. A photographer and a videographer. A baker is a great vendor to have. Some people say it's optional. I say you should have it. It should be up there just with your photographer 
and your videographer because a cake is one of the biggest parts of wedding. What everybody waits for at the wedding reception. Cake. They're not waiting for the bouquet toss. They're not waiting for the garter toss. They're not waiting for the father and daughter dance. Those things happen. But cake. Everybody's about wedding cake. And wedding cakes is one of the biggest SEO search terms on Google, Bing, and Yahoo. Cake. Wedding cake. Cake. So you want to find a baker that has exemplary design. And when I say exemplary, I mean exemplary. My baker has to be able to do some intricate designs on a cake or be able to make a very simplistic cake look absolutely gorgeous. Why? Because it's going to be part of my design set and it needs to match. It all needs to go together and complement each other. So photographer, videographer, baker, and invitation designer. Now you don't, like I said, you don't always have to go with a local one. You don't always have to go with a custom one. Do use your resources. Um, Minted.com has a wedding planner program. When you sign up with them, it doesn't cost anything, but when you sign up with them as a wedding planner, they give you an automatic 20 to 25% off anything that you order or any of your clients order. And they also give you free monograms and free samples. So if you contact them and say that you have a style shoot coming up, you can design a design with them and they'll send it to you and it's for free. And you can use it for your style shoot. So it's a huge benefit to use. Huge. It just depends on what you're doing with your style shoot. If you're going for something really detailed, then I would go with an actual vendor. If you're going for just making sure you want to have a menu card to look pretty, then go with, you know, um, Minted, Zazzle, Shutterfly, all those things. You know, you can get samples that you can use on your table. You don't have to have a menu card to go on every... This is what I need to let you guys know and you'll see on my style shoot. You don't need a menu card to go on every single plate. Let's be honest. You need one. You need one because when the photographer is taking a picture of that plate setting, they're taking a picture of that one plate setting. When they take a picture as a whole, the whole table, you don't always see every single individual plate. You might see the, the four or three that are on this side, but you won't see on the other side. So what you have to understand is when you're in motion, be smart about it. So you're not spending time and money on things you don't need. So you can just get three to four, use it on the one side, and then flip it to the other side. I've been taking a picture from that angle. That's why a planner is important to have, because they can do all these behind the scene things. So you don't need to go and get eight to 12 invitations to go do this table, okay? Um, so just keep in mind, research, 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 research the vendors that you want to use. Only use vendors that you can see yourself working with in the future that you can build a relationship with. Make sure all the details are consistent and match what you're looking for. Um, and then you want to contact a photographer, a video offer, and a baker. Those are my top three. I'd say you ideally have to, have to, have to have really ideally to have a really nice beneficial style shoot. Those are the ones I have to say. If you are not a designer, obviously you need a florist. <laughs> if you're not a designer, either you're going to go get a florist from Sam's Club, Costco, or whatever. If you, if you want, you know, if you're becoming a designer and you, you, you there's, there's a lot of tricks you can use. Um, or work, get a designer, get a, get a florist. Those are things you definitely need to have. You need a rental company. If you don't have that in your inventory, like if you don't have chairs and a table you can use, you need a rental company because you need to get the tables, the chairs. You need to go get the linens. You need to get all the things you kind of already know about. So you need a, a rental company that gets your linens, your tables, your chairs. You need your florist if you're not going to be doing the flowers yourself. If you have flowers, you might not even have flowers in your style shoot, but you need the decor stuff. You need your vases. You need your candles. You need your votives. You need your silverware, you need your plates, you need all those kinds of things. Um, my suggestion for people is invest in your company from the very beginning. And it doesn't have to be a huge dollar amount. Um, at pretty much every single style shoot I did from the very beginning, I knew I was always going to use water goblets, I was always going to use silverware, and I was always going to use plates. So I went to DollarTree.com. <laughs> yes, because when you have a great photographer, can't nobody tell I got it from the Dollar Tree. Let's be honest, okay? So I went and bought eight plates, uh, eight sets of silverware, and eight um, water goblets that are just mine to use specifically for style shoots. And that's what I did in the very beginning. I just used my own set. Even now to this day, I use it when I go and do um, open houses or venue open houses or bridal shows. Those are mine because I don't want to go con have to go pick up stuff from a rental company and pay for it for a couple of hours. No. So I just purchased my own. You just need one set. You just need one set. Eight is good. You don't have to have 10. Eight is typical when you're going around a 60 inch round table or if you're using an eight foot banquet table. So just get eight sets. Go spend 30, 40 bucks that you can use over and over and over and over and over and over and you get your return on investment. If you want to do a really classic setup, make sure you have a wine glass. Make sure you have a champagne glass. You're going to spend 
under 50 bucks getting all this stuff and it's not expensive but it's your stuff that you can use over and over and over and over again um whether you're doing a style shoe or whether you're doing a trade show venue open house bridal show all those kinds of things um so um for number two it's how to organize a style shoe we just talked about how you can find your vendors oh well actually i talked about what type of vendors for finding your vendors when i talk about research what I mean is use the resources that you know of. Facebook is a huge resource. LinkedIn is a huge resource. Instagram is a huge resource, okay? What you do is go on Google, go on Facebook, go on Instagram. Use those hashtags. The purpose of hashtags is to be search terms. The same way you use hashtags for people to find you, use those hashtags to find the people you want. So if I was looking for a photographer, I put Dallas photographer. In Google, I put hashtag Dallas photographer in Facebook, hashtag Dallas photographer in Instagram. I would go on LinkedIn and find photography groups. Like you go to places that you would search to find these vendors. And then you start your research and matching them to what you consistently want and narrowing it down to the team that you actually want to have. So how do you find vendors? Do the same thing you do when you're trying to find your purse, your shoes, your handbag, your next house, your next car. Do your research. Got it? Okay. Now, also under how to organize the style shoot um, is the other big part is once you've found these vendors, creating a proposal to send to your vendors. Um, and in part two, I'm going to show you guys the actual um, proposal that I'm going to use to go to my vendors. So a proposal, let's get specific. I'm not going to say just do a proposal and make it look pretty. I want you guys to be able to do this with me and actually put on your own style shoot, whether you're going to uh, plan a really big one or a small one. I want you to be able to do this. So in creating a proposal, this is the most important imperative thing that probably nobody has ever told you. They'll usually tell you, make sure you have these things included before you do all that. I'm gonna tell you the most imperative, important thing that you need to have when you're creating a proposal. Okay. You need to write it and present it in the way that would attract you. Boom! <laughs> Boom! Hello, Melanie. Boom! So if you're going to ask, how do you do it? There's not one way to do it. There's not one way to do it. It needs to be presented in a way that would attract you. Why am I saying that? Because that's when you'll present it confidently. That's when you'll come off professional. That's what's going to attract your target bride. Let's be honest. You attract the air and the aura you put off about yourself. All of my brides are energetic, full of life, creative. Why? Because that's what I am. I'm energetic, full of life and creative. And all of my brides are eclectic and end up being that way. Because that's what I attract. Because I'm attracting what I put out there. So when you're looking for these vendors, you what did I say from the very beginning? You want to use vendors. You want to build a relationship with. So why would you choose a vendor that you can't connect with, right? That you can't attract, right? You are attracted to them for a certain reason. They'd be attracted to you for the same reason. So when you're doing this, you need to present it in the way that fits your target client. I am colorful, um, loud, <laughs> and creative. So my proposals are way colorful, okay? If you're in corporate planning, you don't need all of that. You won't need all of that. You're, you're in a totally different area, okay? So take that in mind when I'm giving you what elements to include. The way you do the presentation has to be a confident way from you so you can present it that way. Me, when I do them, I do a video. I do a quick little one minute video where I say, hey, because what I've already emailed them in, in, inquiring about, right? So now I want them to really get this idea of what I want to do. So I'm huge on video. I love it. And I think I get more attention to response that way. So I do a quick little bit. Hey, it's Athena Devon. I'm so glad we've been talking. I'm ready to get this style shoot started. So let me tell you a little bit about it. Boom. Say a little bit about it. Include the color scheme. And then details are in the email. And then done, right? That's how I would do it. Am I telling you, you need to go create a video? Absolutely not. <laughs> if you don't like to be in front of the camera, don't do it. Because you're going to come off looking not confident. And then that means they're not going to want to work with you. If you're into spreadsheets, send them the best spreadsheet you possibly can with vendors and times and all that stuff. Because that's who you're trying to attract. You need to present this in the way that you would go... Boom, I love this because that's how you're going to come off confidently, okay? Because when you send an email to someone and you got this presentation, 
they're more likely going to want to meet you in person or get on the phone or do a video chat. And so they're going to need to be able to see or hear your confidence in your presentation when you walk them through it. Okay, so let's talk about the elements that no matter how you present it, you need to actually have in your proposal. So you need to have the details of when you want this and what time you're wanting it and what you're expecting of their time. If you want the baker to come and just drop off and leave, then that's what you need to state. If you want this baker to stay, you need to say, I need three hours of your time. I need four hours of your time. Get specific. So location, time, and the timing. There's two parts of time. The time the shoot is, and then the time that you're needing them and how long for. You need to write out your storyline of the concept, the purpose, the mission of the style shoot so everybody is on the same page. You need to speak about the feedback, okay? When I'm talking about the feedback, it's talking about um, what you're expecting to get back from doing this style shoot. That's where you start putting if you're looking to get it published and where you're wanting to get published. So you talk about where you're going to present it. Are you giving it to seven centerpieces? Are you giving it to Style Me Pretty? Are you doing it to Martha Weddings? Are you doing it to Munuluchi Bride? Are you sending it to um, Southern Noir Weddings? Like you, you need to have a specific specification on what you're going to do with this so you don't have anyone coming back to you and saying, I didn't know you were going to do that and I'm not comfortable with that. So you need to have the content and then you need to have your feedback on what you're expecting to do. You're, you're wanting it to go on a blog. You need to have the rules. Like those are important. So the rules are, if they're going to be part of this, they have to sign this agreement. There's another rule where it says that you have to credit every single vendor that is participating and list all the vendors for them so they cannot say that they had no idea who this vendor was, okay? There's kind of this unwritten rule that they need to credit just the first three times, but if they use it again in a year, they may or may not credit you. Don't get hung up on that part. But initially, yes, uh, yes, get hung up on it. They, you put the rules out there. What rules do you want? You want the rules that they cannot publish it in a certain area? Put that as a rule. You want a rule that they don't publish it at all and they only um, let you publish it? Put that in the rule. You need to make sure you have a set of rules that everybody's in agreement on and on, okay? So we've got your location, the two types of times. Um, you've got your content, your concept of what you're doing. Um, and in your concept, this is where you can get creative, where you can do a... Um, a collage, you can either do a Pinterest board and send the link. You can create an actual collage. Canva.com is a program I love and use all the time for my proposals. I put my um, inspiration pictures in there. I put my color schemes. And then I also put the different types of elements that I want to use. Um, and then you need to list all of your vendors. You need to put the feedback in there on your intention of what you're going to use this style sheet for. And then I always like to close it out with a thank you and a why I love that I'm going to be working with them. I usually give them some kind of uh, information about what I love about them and what I'm excited about to work with them. So I do personalize each proposal. The beginning of it is all general. Everybody's getting the same thing. But then I put a personalized note at the end. Why? Because everything I do is about personalization, about why I like to work with them. So again, to repeat the elements and then we're going to move on to the next thing. Um, repeat the elements on what you um, need to have when doing a proposal. You need to have the location, the two types of times. What are the two types of times? The time of this. So if your style is just going to be from 9 to 12, you need to say it's going to be 9 from 12, but then you need to say what time you need that vendor to be there and for how long you need them to be there for so they know what their responsibility is. Okay, then you need to have your concept written out, whether it's just written out, whether you have a Pinterest board, uh, a layout, um, or extremely descriptive detail form. You need to have that. Um, and then you need to have the feedback part. What is your intention with this and, and, and what you're looking for in return um, and your set of rules from all your vendors. So write got it if you guys got it about what elements you need to have in the proposal. There's a million ways to present it and that's why I said you have to present in a way that is workable for you. When you guys see mine, it's gonna be very colorful, <laughs> very detailed, and live um, because that's just how I do my proposals. I, I'm, I'm not that corporate girl or that, that kind of quiet girl. That's not me. But if you are, don't do it my way. You need to find out your way. I, I am not an Excel girl. I don't use Excel. <laughs> I use Google Sheets, but I don't use Excel. And if you gave me an Excel sheet, I'd be like, huh? Wait, what? Because it's all black and white. Like, it's not pretty. I mean, I know some people, ways you could make it pretty, but like, it's just too much. My fiance is all about pie charts and Excel sheets and whatever. But if that's what you excel in, do it. Make it look like the best Excel pre presentation ever. If you are a guru and amazing at PowerPoint, do your PowerPoint in there. Like, 
who doesn't like getting this whole presentation? They're like, oh my gosh, they got this whole thing together. Like, oh, I want to be a part of this, right? Don't make it so simple where it's a one page something. Okay, get detailed with it, but present it in the way that you would open up that email and be interested in it. Okay, however you would be interested in it, that's how you present it. But the elements you need to have in it, that's what we were talking about. Okay, I see people saying got it. So, okay, next about how you can find the location. We talked about that's an element you need to have is the location. Um, so finding a location, you gotta, you, you have to have your concept first to understand what type of location is gonna work. We talked about small, which should be in your house, um, your backyard. Uh, we talked about large scale. If you're doing a large scale, I highly recommend you actually use a in-service active right now venue that people are looking for. I love to go after the venues that are in construction, <laughs> that are brand new that are looking to get pictures of their venue out. Um, here in Texas, they have new ones every three months. So I never run out of a venue to work with. But I start the communications way ahead of time. I have a venue that is not opening up to July, but I started communications with them last November. Because, oh, you guys give me one second. My battery says low, so I'm gonna charge it up before um, I lose you guys because video going live takes a lot of juice. So there we go, we're connected. Um, so I won't lose you guys. So when you're looking for a venue, my suggestion is to find a venue that either just got bought out and they have new management, um, a brand new one in construction or building, or maybe one that just doesn't have a lot of pictures when you Google them um, and they don't have the best representation or presentation. Those are the ones that are going to find working with you the most beneficial. If you go after a venue that's the most popular venue out there, all weddings are there. Mm, you, you, you might run into where you have to pay for the space and pay for the time and it's it's you know you don't get as much benefit from them um i'm finding when i work with venues in new construction they're going they, they tell me up front that they're going to put those pictures as the marketing pictures on their website that is huge because in the corner they'll put photographer so-and-so designer this like i get credit on their website that's going to get majorly looked at uh, by all these brides so that is a huge benefit so this is all in your strategy when you're doing your style shoots, like what the purpose is for doing that. So I go for new ones or ones that I noticed just got that were for sale and got bought out by a new management company. I go and introduce myself. I give them little office gifts. I give them a welcome to the industry. And then I start my, my little, my little building of the relationship with them to lead up to doing this, uh, style shoot and then I create a style shoot that works not only for me but also works for their style of venue if I want to do a Tuscany style shoot because I really want to do one I'm gonna go find a Tuscany styled venue why because it matches what I'm looking for I'm not gonna go get a warehouse to go do a Tuscany style shoot that means I'm doing a whole bunch of work to turn that place around and flip it the way I want which means more time more money more investments um, so you have to take all those things into it. So when you're looking for a venue, my recommendation is to go for those types of venues. Now you can go for the really popular ones. Just understand the benefit isn't going to be as much. They're not, they're most likely not going to use your pictures or, or, or put you in their social media. I have a lot of venues that, uh, go live at my weddings because they love what I do and I've worked with them in the past. So they go live, um, on their Instagram pages and put my weddings on their websites and their blogs because I've built a relationship with them and I at one point did a style shoot with them and, and kind of helped them out. Um, I have one venue that has me on there as one of their preferred planners and they refer me almost every single month um, because I did the, the, the launch of their venue, okay? So I did a huge, I call it a style shoot. It ended, you know, ended up being an open house where vendors came, but for me it was a style shoot because it was a style shoot before everyone showed up. Um, and I did a whole bunch of tables. So it was the biggest style shoot I ever did but they used that event as their marketing video for the entire first year. And in their credits, they list my company name and my company name is on their website because I got them when that venue got bought out. Um, I found that the venue was for sale doing a Facebook search um, and I knew the vendor who was buying it. So I contacted that vendor and grew a little closer to them and then boom, I did their opening launch for their event. And I love, 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 love their venue and still try and do some style shoots over there because they're just absolutely gorgeous. Because uh, they're in the middle of nowhere and a lot of people didn't know about them. So that was the benefit, okay? So that's in finding a space. Just find a space that's gonna match what you're kind of looking for. And a venue, again, the way you would choose a vendor is choosing a venue you wanna work with. Choose a venue that you actually wanna do a wedding at um, and build a relationship with them. So those are my best 
ways to find a venue is, is you can do a search for uh, ven venues that are for sale or find out if new management just happened somewhere or if a new venue is coming to town, even though no, they're not coming for another six to eight months, start the communications right now so you're on their forefront mind. Okay, for the timeline for completing your required tasks, this is the perfect practice for you doing a style shoot like you would do a wedding. You need the same kind of timeline. You need to know when your vendors are going to arrive, when they need to be broken down by, what time they need to be set up by. You need to know um, in your timeline um, when your makeup artist is going to get started on the model and what time she needs to be done so that she can be done by the time that the photographer starts. And you need to be able to correlate the relationship between the photographer and the videographer to make sure they're not in each other's way, but they're working together what they need and making sure that the you have a photo list for your photographer of the shots. This is your style shoot, so you get to tell them what you want pictures of. So you need to have a video shot list and a photo list so that they get those things. You need to organize which shots you want first because like I said, maybe you're flipping some things during the style shoot. I like to start um, with menu card on one and then I move it to the other side and then I go from this angle. And so you need to be able to put all those little details in there so you're not standing around looking like, oh, I didn't do that and you don't get the shots that you want because you didn't set up what you were looking for. So in your timeline, you have two timelines, just the same way you would for any wedding or event. You have the timeline of duties and responsibilities that need to happen leading up to the style shoot, and then the timeline on the style shoot. So leading up to it, you need to set deadlines. That's what that timeline is all about. Otherwise, you'll never get to the style shoot. Set a specific date for this. The way you set the date is by choosing your location because you can choose a date and never find a location. So don't limit yourself that way. Find a location first, set a date according to their availability, get that booked down so they don't get anything else on the books. Then from there, once you get that, then you start working towards what you need to do. So you set yourself a deadline. When you set yourself a deadline, you get things done. If you just list out that you need a photographer and videographer, you're gonna get to two weeks before it and not have a photographer or a videographer, or you're gonna end up forcing yourself to just pick one and not get the best deal out of it because you didn't have the time to do your research. So, you know, go off what you know. If, if you know it's gonna take you a week to really dig in, then say, first week, book photographer. Second week, get videographer. Third week, get this. So you already know you need at least three weeks leading up to this particular date. So don't set a date that's two weeks away when you know you can't get it together, okay? When you've done this over and over and over again, you can do a style shoot in 24 hours. You can't because you, you've got the relationships already. But when you're first starting out, be real. It may take you a month to do one. That's okay. It's your own, it's your own deadline, your own timeline. So you're not hurting anybody. So, but be realistic with it, okay? So you need to set deadlines. Set deadlines on when you're going to decide on your photographer, when you're gonna decide on each one of the vendors. Set deadlines to have your proposal put together. Set deadlines on when you're going to put it out and email everyone. Set expectations on when you should hear from them. And in your mind, you say, I should hear from them on the third day. If I haven't heard from them on the third day, I'm moving on to the next one. So when you're looking for these vendors, give yourselves two to three that you'd like to go for. Contact the one you really want first, the second one and the third one if those two don't work out. Put your, don't put yourself in a hole by only getting one of each and then it starts falling apart because people all of a sudden aren't available. Have your backups. The same way in a wedding day or any event day, you would have your backups of vendors in case something was to go wrong. So your timeline is going to be very much like what your timeline would have. So those who are currently students at QC Event Planning School, those same timelines that you see when you're doing your case studies and in your coursework, those same timelines, and get those things, apply that to a style shoot the exact same way do the exact same thing, okay? So you need to make sure that you have a timeline for leading up to the event and then a timeline for the day of the event, okay? Now, let's move on to number three, okay? Number three is about how we're gonna use the photos in your business and portfolio, and this is my favorite part because I wanna share stuff with you guys that's golden, that you won't hear from anybody but QC Event Planning School and me. Right? Because I learned this from QC Event Planning School. Give me a second, guys. Mm. So, earlier I mentioned, of course, you know that you have the publications. And you obviously know that you have your website and your blog. But we live in a world today of social media. Hugely social media from Instagram to Instagram stories to Instagram highlights to Facebook lives to Facebook stories to Facebook posts 
to LinkedIn, to groups, to what's that thing called? Snapchat, Periscope, Anchor. My gosh, the list goes on. I can't even keep up with all of them anymore. Um, so you want to use those, but I'm going to give you guys another caution statement. So put another thing on your thing that says caution statement. When you do a style shoot, do not use all of the photos the first time. <laughs> ah, this irritates me when I see people use it. You're cutting off 50% of the benefits you can get when you do that. When you do a style shoot, do not load all of the pictures into your blog. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's another no, 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 no. Say no. Say no if you guys are hearing me. Say no. Mm -mm. No. Don't do it. <sighs> Don't do it. You guys will probably get about a, um, anywhere from 75 to 300 pictures from a style shoot if you're working with a really good photographer because they're that excited about what they're taking pictures of. They take a whole bunch. Um, don't do that. Mm, Carrie Ann got it. Nikki got it. Nope. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Shantae got it. No. I know it's going to be so hard because you have all these gorgeous pictures and you want to put it out. But let me tell you what. A lot of those pictures are kind of repetitive. It's just a different angle, um, a different height, a different level. So use that to your benefit, you guys. When you do your blog, pick out what I call these storyline pictures. Storyline pictures. What's the story of a wedding? The beforehand of the getting ready. The first look, a first touch if they have one. And we're going to, I'm specifically talking weddings, it's not events yet. Um, the ceremony, um, the cutting of the cake, um, either bouquet toss or garden toss. Uh, and toasts, like those specific things that you see, right? So pick out those just specific pictures and a few of the design details to do in the introduction of this blog. Do not put all 50 pictures out there, okay? Let me tell you why. I'm about to give y'all the secret. Are y'all ready for the secret? Y'all ready for the secret? Here's the secret on how to make one style shoot last you for three months. It can go longer than that. It really could because it won't die out. But you can have one style shoot, whether it's large or small, last you for three months. So you can do like just four style shoots for a year and be good for the entire year. Like how many of y'all, raise your hand, put a hand emoji, if you'd love to only have to do one to four style shoots and be good for marketing and advertising for the year. Like I do. I have a whole bunch of weddings and events to do. I don't have time to do like 12 style shoots. I had someone say they, their goal is to do one style shoot every month. That's a lot. That means you're not utilizing it correctly or benefits. So this is what you do. When you get these pictures back, oh, ah, e, ah, oh my God, do all that stuff over it. Then start your strategy, okay? Take just the storyline pictures. Thank you, Marcia. She put her hands up. Yes, Carrie Ann, perfect. Lovely, yes, perfect. Nalisha, is that how you say it? Nalisha? She put her hands up. Allegra, yes. Alara, yes. Okay, perfect. So don't put them all out there. Don't put all your eggs in one basket, okay? Don't do that. <laughs> okay, this is what you do. You take the top, 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 toppy tip, top, top ones for what you're looking for, which would be your storyline pictures, okay? There's going to be 20 pictures of them cutting the cake. Pick one. Pick one. Pick the one of the front of them or pick the one of them actually cutting, but there's going to be like 20 pictures of just cutting the cake, okay? So pick one and then that way in your blog, you can do a storyline because this is the same thing when you, when you send it off to get it published, they only want some of the pictures. They don't want you to send them all 300 pictures. They're not going to go through all of those. They're looking for the perfect photographer or planner that submits something that already tells the story for them. So it makes their job easier. They will pick you over all the other ones that sent 300 pictures. I promise you, if you send them 20 of the best pictures and a concept and storyline, you will get published way faster than all the other ones. Promise you. Your pictures might not even be as good as theirs, but it's just a storyline which makes the pictures look so much better. Okay, so you get the publication. Let's say you got published on Borrowed and Blue. Well, actually, no, Borrowed, Borrowed and Blue clothes now. It's now Zola. So say you got, you got published on Zola. Yay! They already posted 
the 27 pictures you sent them. Are you going to take those same 27 pictures and post them on your blog? Why would you do that? I see this all the time where there's a publication, which is huge for SEO, by the way. And they take the exact same story and exact same pictures and put it on their blog. Now, I don't mean that they, they just sharing it. Yes, share it. Show it shows up on your website. But I mean people who, who actually repeat the publication in their own way exactly the same as a whole separate publication on their website. Yeah, no. That's another no. No, 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 no. You just cut yourself short. Don't do that. Get your publication and put it on your blog and your Facebook really short. Three, four sentences. Oh, we're so excited. We've been published on so, 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 so. Click this link to check out more. Boom, right? Boom. That's what you do because that's going to create backlinks and, and, and swapping links. You sending them to the website, they get the traffic, they get sent back to you. Boom, 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 boom. It goes boom, 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 right? So you get this publication. You get so excited. Let it go woo for two weeks. Don't do anything for two weeks. Put out the initial yay. Don't post every single day. We're published, we're published, we're published, we're published. Don't do that, 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 okay? Get it out there in the first two or three days. Yay, we got published the, on Monday. Do it in the morning. On Tuesday, send it out on, on, um, on the afternoon. And on Wednesday, talk about it at night. Then be done with it. Be done, be done. Let the SEO work for itself, okay? Then don't mention it and don't talk about it for another two weeks, okay? Leave it alone. Leave it alone, okay? Now, after two weeks, what you do is you now go do a small story. So let's say this week, I'm going to kind of focus on um, cakes for the week and different ways of cakes because there's like a million ways you can talk about cake. You can talk about how you choose the right layers. You can talk about how you choose your flavors. You can talk about how you choose the color scheme and the design. You can talk about what flavors are most popular. You can talk about how to style the cake. You can talk about how to present the cake. I'm going on and on and on and on. Do you guys get what I'm trying to say? Hello. I'm hitting on a huge benefit of a style shoot here. You can take just a picture of the cake. One picture from this style shoot of the cake and create an entire social media series of tips on wedding cake. Y'all, wedding cake is one of the number one search terms on Google. If you want attention on your social media, on your website, talk about cake, okay? So you get this cake from your style shoot, right? That's beautiful, right? And, and you put a couple, like, you know, you have a total of five pictures in this post. Like you've got the one about the cake and then a different picture from a different angle of them cutting the cake. Not the same picture that was in your publication, okay? And you get another angle and you tell the story about why a bride should have four tiers of a cake. That's that article, right? So that week, you can talk about different aspects of a cake, right? You can talk about the different aspects. So the first picture can be just a picture of just the cake sitting alone on Monday. Say you post three days a week, okay? So on Monday, you'll post the actual cake and you'll talk about, you know, how you choose tiers for your, for your wedding cake. What are you doing? You're creating yourself as an expert on weddings and specifically talking about cakes. So a bride's going to say, she knows how to help me choose a cake. So I need her as a planner so I can find my baker. I promise you that's how they think and that's how it's going to work. On Wednesday, you post the same cake. Is that okay? Yes, because it's from a different angle and you have a whole different other tip now, right? So now you're going to talk about how you choose flavors of a cake. That's post two. We're still on just the cake. Okay, then Friday comes and you're going to talk about what's most important to a cake. Is it the design or the taste? That's a huge conversation, huge conversation. My bride talk about all the time, should I go for the taste or should I go for the design? Because typically when you want the design of the cake to be exemplary and the taste, your price goes like, Wah! and their budget is here. So you almost kind of have to choose. It's just a thing. It just happens in the industry. Um, so I now have a publication that has been going on for two weeks because now and you're probably wondering why I said two weeks because you're not the only one posting that. You have all these other vendors that were posting it too. If you posted it on Wednesday, but they don't talk about it till Friday, you're getting all that continual publication for those two weeks. That's why I said leave it alone for two weeks. 
So now you're posting this cake again, right? Tag the baker. So now she's going to say, oh, look at this cake I made from the style shoot from this publication that's now over here. So they're sending them, they're sending someone who goes to their Instagram to the publication that you are listed on. Do you, do you see what I'm doing here? So the baker is going to get this attention because you're tagging them. They'll now repost your post on their social media page so their followers now get over to your page. You guys clicking? Are y'all clicking? Click. Say click. Are y'all clicking? Is, is, is light bulbs going off? Are y'all are seeing what I'm doing with this? Because this is a trend that you're going to do with everything. You're going to do that with the cake. You're going to do that with the plate setting. You're going to do that with the centerpiece. You're going to do that, that with the menu. You're gonna do, do you see now, without me having to go into way much detail, how you expand this to last you for three whole months? You talk about different elements when you go and spread it out because each time you focus on a different thing it's still focusing on you and your brand and your company and then you're you are you are how can i say this you are indirect or indirectly getting extra exposure because when i'm talking about this cake i'm going to constantly tag this baker right so she's gonna be like i didn't post today i'm just going to repost what athena did over in Coles creation so when she does a repost, whose name shows up on the picture? Mine, in the bottom left corner, Coalesce Creations. She's gonna use my hashtags, Coalesce Creations. And people are gonna be like, who's this? Click, boom, now they're on my page. So now they're seeing all that I do and all the beautiful, beautifulness. And they're seeing that same cake. But then they see that, oh, there's an entire publication off of this cake. Let me click that. So now I'm gonna go back to the publication and see everything that Athena did, that also this baker did. So now who do I have in my mind? Athena and Baker. But it's not just the baker that you did. Oh, whoever did that light post picture, Morgan. Hey, yes, girl. I love it. I didn't even know you could see that on there. That's awesome. Light bulb. I love it. So you do that with the baker. You do that with the imitation designer. You do that with the photographer. You do that with the videographer. Show 60. You guys know there's Instagram stories and Facebook stories, right? Show little mini clips. Don't post the entire freaking video. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's the other thing. If you're going to use video to videography, don't post the entire video to the end of your entire marketing thing. Don't do that. You have to build up anticipation. So just show the intro. Show a couple of seconds here and there building up to this video. So people are like, people can be like, oh, I want more. I want more. I mean, how many times do you guys see a video and it says part one and you just cannot wait to part two? And so what are you doing? You're checking. I'm getting antsy. I'm getting antsy. I'm checking. I'm checking. I'm checking. You go back, right? So create that for your business. Show a little bit, and then another little bit, and then another little bit, and a little bit, and then at the end, boom, put the entire full video, and they can be like, oh, I saw that. Oh, that's how that happened. Oh, that's how that came together. Oh, that, and then they get more excited. You guys, hello, look at the movie industry. What happens? Do you see the, the do you wait to talk about the movie till you see the full movie? No. You talk about the trailer. You talk about the flyer. You talk about what happened in the first movie. Like you're already talking about it. You haven't seen the goddamn on movie yet. Get people talking about that like that about your videos. So just show a little bit, a little bit, because people do that all the time. They just post a full video and that video will last you a couple of days because people don't seen it. They don't need to see it again. So you just, uh, you just do a little bit, 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 and you build up to the end. Okay. So I hope you guys get it on how you can use these pictures and really expand to not just your blog, not just the publication, but through your social media, you can even expand it into direct contact with your brides. Um, I usually in the bottom of my email signature, I always add it at the very end. I have a basic standard you know, email signature, but when I know I'm contenting like a new bride or something, I'll add check in our latest Instagram post, check our latest publication. Look, we've been published at, and then it sends them back through the same funnel, funnel from the, the publication to my Instagram, to this, to back the website, to now I really want to book Athena because it's not just its email, but I got looped all the way back around, right? So that's what happens, you guys. And it, and it gets people excited when you can come off as an expert because you're not just showing a picture, you're showing your expertise in knowing how to use all those different things about a wedding. So a style shoot is perfect and great for a planner, a designer, a florist, a baker, all, all, all of those kinds of things. Okay. So another important question that people usually always ask is, should a um, should your photos and your style shoots be put in chronological order? Um, and I'm going to say this, that's really a personal decision because some people will be strong about it this way and other people's will be strong about it this way, okay? So here is my thing. Um, 
coming from the perspective of a bride, they don't care when it was. All they care about is that it was your work. Does that make sense? Like your design skill set didn't get old because it was two years ago. Because what you did two years ago, you can still do today and you'll do it even better because you've learned something over those two years, right? Now, I probably wouldn't post or keep pictures that were six years ago because your skill set and your style has probably way enhanced from that. You don't want that to represent yourself. But if you have work that's a year old, six months old, two years old, that still looks really good and does greatness for you, leave it there. It's okay. I don't, I don't put, I put, I put the, I typically put just the month that something happened. I don't put the year. Like number one, my brides are probably just like, I don't need people to know when I got married. So I just put March 24th, April 14th, so-and-so got married. Who cares about the, who cares? Who cares about the year? The only time you should care about the year or a day is when something expires that can cause you some health damage. Like I need to know the expiration date of eating grapes um, or sweet potato pie or bread, right? I need to know those expirations. But a photo doesn't expire. So that's my opinion. Someone else may tell you something different. You have to look at what is beneficial for your company. I'm looking at this from a business standpoint, not a personal moral standpoint. From a business standpoint, for my clients, they are not going to care when it was done as long as it attracts them, looks good, and it matches what I can do for them, okay? I don't want to keep old stuff up if it's no longer benefiting me or my company. There's some things I did when I first started that I don't dare want anyone to know that I did. You know, I was back in those DIY days when I was going to Dollar Tree and taking those Dollar Tree um, vases and using East 36000 and, and building these vases that I just thought were so amazing. If you're doing that, I'm not putting you down. I am not putting you down. They are really pretty. But at some point, you're going to upgrade yourself to not having to do all those DIY anymore. Um, and that's just where I am right now in my business. I'm, I'm, I'm six and a half years in. So if you're just getting started, I am not downing you for do that because I did that and had an inventory of that stuff and it got me through my first two or three years. So don't, I'm not downing you if you do that. Okay. Um, but I don't want to use those pictures cause I no longer do them. So I don't want pictures to represent what I'm doing. So when I'm talking about putting them in order of like recent work, I'm going to put the stuff that's most beneficial for me forefront and forward um because if i have a new wedding that i really like and i really want to put the pictures out but it's a fall wedding and i had a summer wedding from last year that would be way more beneficial i'm gonna put the summer wedding at forefront because i'm in the time frame right now to attract the summer bride so even though that was older than this most newest one i'll have both but i'm gonna have the one that's most beneficial for me at the season and at the timing to be the featured one or the one that you fall on to first if that makes sense, okay? So that's what I'm gonna say about, you know, the time you use it. Okay, and then this is the last part. We're gonna open up for questions so we're not here for three hours because you know, y'all know I can keep you. Okay, so um, number th under number three, still talking about how you use the photos for your business portfolio. Um, how you would emphasize your work rather than other vendors' work. And I kind of already touched on this. Um, when you have to use a style shoot to put yourself off as the expert if you do a style shoot and you just stop at the fact that you have pretty pictures you're not using the full benefits of a style shoot okay you really really want to emphasize all the parts of what you do okay when you're a designer you don't just do the beautiful beautiful things you want to emphasize your process and how you come up with a concept your process and how you create a color scheme how do you create a mood out of something beautiful? Because you guys know when it comes to design, it's about the style, the theme, the color scheme, and the mood. There's parts to design. And not just about being beautiful. Because it can be pretty. And if it gives me no expression or no feeling, you're not going to get the, oh, for me. It's going to be, oh, that's pretty. So do you just want me to re react and say, oh, that's pretty? Or, Oh my, oh my, that's what you want, right? When, when, I, when I get my brides to get revealed to the reception, I don't want the, oh, Athena's so pretty. I didn't do my job. If my bride says, oh, this is so pretty, I'm devastated. I did not do my job. I want my bride to be speechless, to stand still, to get frozen, to cry so I can give her this tissue I have in my pocket ready for her, to, to, to be sighing deep breaths like, oh my, oh my, oh. Like, that's what I expect. 
of all of my brides when I do the reveal because that's what I want, right? I don't want the, just the pre. But how do I get that? It's because I create a mood from the details that I use in there, okay? So when you're emphasizing your work, you need to break it down to the smaller elements, not just the beautiful picture. So break down your storyline and how you came up with the concept, why you chose those colors, why you chose to do this, how you did this. You guys break it back down to the elementary basics. Of, and my students, those who are on here are my students, have all heard me say this. Always break everything down to the who, what, when, where, why, and how. Break that down into your expertise. Expertise. Who was your, who, who did you have in mind when you were creating this concept? Um, when is the best time for this design to be used? If you're doing a winter themed event, obviously nobody wants to use those designs for a summer wedding. So when you're talking about the when, you want to talk about for those brides getting married in the fall that want to have this. This is the perfect design for you and this is why, right? Um, the where, where can people do these types of designs? Can they do them in these style of venues? Can they do them in a park? Can they do them in warehouses? Like you want to answer questions for brides before they ask the question. So if someone sees this beautiful picture and they say, how can I use that in my wedding? In your storyline, you want to have enough information in there where they can say, oh, I can use this at my backyard wedding because she just said I can do that, right? So you're putting yourself off as an expert. So that's how you emphasize your work. Even when you're working with nine to 12 other vendors, like I talked about when I was talking about, talking about the wedding cake, you didn't make the cake, but you contacted that baker, you told the baker your concept, you gave the baker your color scheme, you explained what you wanted it to feel like and what you possibly wanted it to taste like, because typically after a style shoot, we all eat the cake, right? So you have to emphasize what your value is in a style shoot that's way past just a pretty picture okay so i hope you guys got it say got it you guys if that information was either something you haven't ever heard before or a refresh because you're a student with qc and you've heard this from these wonderful courses that they have a lot of what i said is things that you learn in the qc event planning school event and design course um, and if you've been my student you've heard me talk about the who what when where and why you already know about design being broken down to the scheme, the theme, the mood, and the style. And so if you guys are interested in it, yes, QC, has someone, uh, someone did ask that question, does QC have a school for design? Yes, they do. It's called the Event and Design Course, and I love it. It's so colorful. Um, so I, hope I see some people saying, got it, so that good, that's good, that's good, that makes me feel good. So overall, you guys, I just wanted you to see that number one, you don't always have to do a style shoot just for the sake of getting it published. Publish it on your own god dang on website, okay? Because when you post it on your website, it still gets published because your website and your URL is still on Google and Bing and Yahoo, and that link will still get shared from all the other vendors. If you want to just pu publish it to your own blog, make all the vendors share your blog. It doesn't always have to be an external website. If you're a little scared of it or you're hesitant or you just don't feel you're there yet, do your own publication. That's perfectly fine. It's probably what you should do anyways. Um, but not saying that the publications are not important. Just don't base your sole focus on publications because they're difficult and they take a really long time and a certain set of a skill um, to really get it going. I I've had, I think, 10 publications at this point. I have to go back. I have, I have several, um, but I have way more small that get me much more return on investment uh, in my business from the small ones because this is the thing you guys the reason I'm really honing in on not focusing on these publications is because those publications are not forever in this last year and a half alone major publications have shut down they have shut down Martha Stewart weddings has has published that they're closing they didn't they ended up changing something but everyone started freaking out when they realized they had all these publications on this one particular place because they focused on it, that now we're all gonna get wiped away and disappeared so no one would know. So it, it's more important to have all this information internally and for yourself. It is good to have at least three to four publications that you can lean on. Three to four. I would put a goal to have three to four publications within the first three years of your business. That is a great goal to have. But don't be focused on having to always get published 
Because I'm gonna tell you right now, brides don't don't they don't really always look at that. They're looking at the what's active and what's going on right now. They're more into your social media than reading the knot or wedding wire or style me pretty or all those other kinds of things. Um, really quick, Rebecca, yes, the seventy nine dollar wheel works on any of the many courses they have, but it ends tonight, so you have to sign up by midnight Eastern tonight. It goes for any course. Um, the design design course, the accelerate your course, the any course. It's it's your deposit to get started, okay? Um, so I hope you guys got that. So I am gonna wait right now. Um QC is collecting all of the questions uh that you guys had um so I can get them answered for you and um to kind of talk about the style shoot that's coming up. In my style shoot, I will show you guys, or you guys should be able to see if I'm doing a small scale one or a large one. So these are the things I want you guys to look for. So write this down in the style shoot that we're going to do live. I want you to be able to determine, is this a small scale, a personal scale, or a large scale, okay? Um, I want you to be able to see how I orchestrate it and give myself the benefits. For this particular style shoot, I'm coming from two areas, I'm coming as the planner and coordinator and as the floor slash designer. So I'll be able to, you know, I have both. I'll be coming from both directions. So those who are planners will be able to see and those who are floor designers will be able to see. Um, so I want you to be able to kind of pick out how I'm interacting with the vendors to see if you can figure out why I chose each vendor. I'm gonna do like a little mini interview with each one of them. Um, I want you guys to be able to see the first round of questions. There's usually quite a bit. Okay, there's a few in here. Okay, so Rebecca Johnson asked, should your style shoot always reflect your brand and the type of weddings you want to do? And do you include how much a look would cost a client if they wanted to use it as inspiration for the photo? Like in parentheses, get this look for blah, 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 blah. Okay, so this is a lot of questions in one, so I'm gonna start with the first one. And I think I kind of already answered that. Her first question was, should your style shoot always reflect your brand and the type of weddings you want to do? Absolutely, yes. Otherwise, what is the point of doing it? Why would you do something that is, okay, um, just to name a, a specific niche. Don't design a cultural wedding if you do not want cultural wedding clients. Why? Why would you do that? Don't do something that doesn't reflect. Now, when we say brand, I don't mean that it always needs to be your business colors. Those are your business colors. They ain't got nothing to do with your style shoe, okay? Every now and then I do a style shoe that's in my business colors because they're popular colors. I, I booked... Uh, six brides at a bridal shoot recently because I did my my uh, bridal show booth in my brand colors and their weddings their wedding was those colors my one of my favorite you're not supposed to have favorites but I have one of my favorite brides uh, booked me and she said she booked me because my website matched her wedding so I mean brand colors are important but I wouldn't always do a style shoot in your business colors when you're saying brand your brand is all about your behavior your recognition the awareness that you have it's it's about your message and your 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 uh purpose of your um your company that's what you want to exude in what it is so um if you're going for luxury brides when you do style shoots you always want them to reflect a luxury setup if you're going for the DIY bride you want it to reflect the DIY bride if you're going for the middle class, or if you're going for the cultural wedding, if you're going for the East Asian, if you're going for um, the um, the LGBT, well, whatever you're doing, that if that's your target client, that's who you want to attract. So don't do something that's outside of that, because then you're going to get attention that you don't want or don't need. Second part of your question, um, do you include how much a look would cost as a client? Now, that's a really good question. If they want to use this as an inspiration for the wedding, I don't do that in a style shoot. Because then you're, you, you're, again, putting all your eggs in one basket. That is a great segment to put on a Pinterest board. One of the great ways to use Pinterest is to put these beautiful inspiration pictures together and then talk about what the costs are. So you can boost up your Pinterest page like that or use that as a section in your blog. Um, make a category on your blog that says, get this look for and put a whole bunch of different things in there. So I wouldn't do it in the actual publication, the style shoot, or in my initial publication, uh, my initial publishing in my blog, the style shoot, but I would do it as an add-on. Does that make sense? So I would do it as an add-on. I wouldn't put it in the initial one. Okay, Deidre Smith said, are you paying for all the vendors you use? So yes and no, because it just depends. If you, if you don't build the relationship with the vendor and the concept doesn't match and isn't beneficial to them, you may end up paying for that. I've never paid for a vendor for a style shoot because I do my homework to begin with. I spend the time that's needed to build the relationships. 
I choose vendors that would find the style and concept I have to be just as beneficial for them as it is for me. So they want the pictures, they want the, the, the publications, they want the credit, they want the mentions. So the, no, there's no fee. But I'm not going to say, no, you don't pay for them because sometimes you do have to pay for them. If you go for that venue that I said that was way popular and all the weddings are there, they most likely will charge you because it's no benefit to them because they already have the website, they already have the pictures they want, and they're already majorly popular. So it, it's, it's going to be a benefit for you and not for them. So they're probably going to charge you a per hour fee to be able to use their space. So that's why I said it's really strategic in how you choose your location and your vendors and then you don't have to pay. I have yet to pay a vendor to you to do a style shoot. Um, the only vendor I pay um, is a is a makeup artist if I'm asking her to do more than just the models. Like if I'm asking her to do my makeup and my team, I will pay for me and my team to have makeup because that's not that has nothing to do with the style shoot. That's just if I get caught in a picture setting up, I want to look good. But um, she she complimentary does the models. And then I'll pay her to do me and my team. Um, whether she asks me to or not, I just will because I want to invest in their 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 business. That's just that's just my personality and how I do things. Um, but like when I'm working with a photographer or a videographer, the whole point is everyone knows this is a benefit for that feedback portion I told you about in your propo in your proposal. That's really important that you have what the intention is because that's where they're going to find out if this is beneficial for them or not. If they want to participate or if there's going to be a charge. So yes, you can get charged. And no, you could not get charged. It all depends on how you approach your vendors and how much time you really spend in curating that relationship with them. Um, okay, for Laura, is it Declarico? I'm so sorry if I'm butch butchering your guys' names. Um, how do you find your vendors use? I think we kind of already answered that. Um, Courtney Jackson, does a QC course touch on how to gather design questions? Yes, Courtney Jackson. The uh, design course does talk about gathering uh design questions and the way they talk about it is giving you scenarios that you end up having to come up with these things so they give you uh they give you sample clients that you have to come up with different elements for you guys i'm messing with my hair because i just got it and it's bothering me <laughs> um it's the end of the night um so for laura um no wait go back courtney i'm talking about courtney um does the qc course touch on how to gather design yes it, it talks about how you come up with a color scheme. They actually make you come up with color schemes. And that's the, one of the first things you do that I love because a lot of people just, a lot of people don't know how to come up with color schemes or they're stuck on one particular type. Um, and you learn about the different types of color schemes from um, Tetrid to complementary to double complementary. You probably never even heard of those things, but you will when you become a student QC for planning school because they break all those things down. My favorite is the Tetrid um, color scheme because it's a very unexpected one. And um, I love to, to take the challenge to make it look pretty. So yes, the course does touch on that. They even give you a color wheel. And that's the funnest thing to do to play with colors. Michelle Isaac said, besides coming up with my own creative concept and design, is it best to do most of my style shoots based on what's trending at the moment? So that is a yes and a no. Um, if you're at the end of a trend, it might not be the best thing. If you're at the beginning, then yeah, it's a great thing to do because you can get on the trend with everyone else. But also I say no because you want to be a trendsetter um, because that's where you get the biggest, um, the, the biggest bang for your buck. So if you are creative and you create something new, then maybe the trend's not there yet and you want to start the trend. So if you're bold and creative um, and that's your goal, then be a trendsetter. And no, don't do a trend. Create your own trend. But yes, you kind of want to stick around what's kind of trending, but you don't want to play out a trend that's kind of gone on a little too long that we're tired of. It's the same way you don't want to hear the same song over and over and over and over and over in the radio because it's played itself out at this point, right? Um, so you you got to kind of look at where you are on the scale of that trend. Okay. Allegra Tolkien said, what if you have no idea of what kind of bride you want in terms of choosing vendors and customization? Then don't do a style shoot yet, Okay. <laughs> Ah, that's the first thing. You have to know who your target bride is. And so let me quickly answer, how do you figure out your target bride? Um, what do you like? What do you like to do? Why would you choose you? Like, if you were a bride and you were looking for a wedding planner, what would you be looking for? Right? Because I, I mentioned that earlier. You attract the aura you put out. So 
If, if, if I do everything DIY, I'm a DIY type of person, it's going to be really difficult for me to go get and attract luxury brides because I'm not living in, I'm, I'm not, you can do it. It just makes it really difficult. Okay. It, it's, it's, it's a whole mindset thing and the way you live and the way you speak and the way that you do things. So the way that you figure out your target bride, like before you can do anything in your business, you really need to have your direction of where you want to go. Um, because that's what you base everything off of. You base your company name, your tagline, your mission, your vision, the way you brand, the way you do your presentations. All of those are based on your type of bride. QC Event Planning School has a course called Accelerate Your Business that specifically talks about how in the world you even decide on and choose your target bride. I would highly recommend that. Highly. I can't stress enough. Highly recommend the Accelerate Your Business. If you are serious about your career becoming a lifestyle, when I say a career becoming a lifestyle, I mean, you don't have a career where you just work every day and then that's what it is. Like your career should create the lifestyle you started the career for, okay? So my lifestyle is amazing because uh, I can afford what I need for my kids. I can go on vacations. I can, I can afford to take two months off of work because my team is running my company. I mean, there's just a lot of things I can afford to... to, to to not be at work for three months because my daughter was sick. Like there's a lot of things that happen, but because I, my career has created a lifestyle, I'm able to maintain everything. So if you are serious about your business, whether you've started it, haven't started it, you're two, three years in, but you're at a rut or you're just not going where you want, go check out the Accelerate Your Business course. So seriously, look at it because that one is not a general course like all the other ones are general education about all the things you really need to know about planning, corporate planning, event planning, design, um, destination wedding, luxury planning, interior design. All those are the general education you have to have. Accelerate Your Business is specifically about you and your business. You work one-on-one -on -one with your tutor like this. We get on video calls with Skype. I give you specific advice about your actual business. I talk about your company name. We, we, we go through your actual website. How, we go through your social media plan. We plan one out for you. We plan out your budget. We, uh, that course is specific to you and your business. So if you don't know your target bride, I need to see your name pop up on the list of who signed up for Accelerate Your Business tonight uh, because that is the course that's going to do that for you. Um, when I received this information, I, I, re I, re I took myself through this course and and looked at things and learned myself. I'm, I'm sorry, you guys, but I'm forever going to be in a learnable focus. I'm never going to say I know it all. I'm never going to say I know everything and I'm, I can't grow. I'm always constantly lurking to grow. I love that they came out with this course. I love everything they said because it's so real. And I wish they had this course when I started six years ago because I think I'd be way farther than I am. And I'm very successful right now. Um, and I'm, I'm, I, I've really accomplished way more than I thought I would have had, but had I had this course, had I had this course, I would probably already have my firm and building at this point. Let's just put it that way. That's a goal of mine, but I think I would have reached it because this course gets so, so specific, but I'm going to be honest. It is intense. It is intense. But afterwards you will not be able to say you don't know what you're doing or where you're going, or what your next step is, because that one totally outlines it. So if you don't know, yet know your target bride or your client, or how to create a budget, or how to do your own social media plan, so you hear me talking about how to take this style shoot and spread it out, then you need the Accelerate Your Business course. It's a new one. I don't even know if it's a year old yet. I don't, I don't remember. But it's a new one, and it's one that you need to have if you are serious about your business. If you're only in concept mode about your business, or you're just doing it as a hobby, don't sign up for it. Don't sign up for it. Yes, Listen to Shantae Hugglebook. She knows it is intense. But Shantae, just in the comments so people can see it, write what you're getting out of it. Like seriously, it's intense. But I guarantee you it has, it has changed your mindset of your business and you've made some steps and moves that have really made a difference in your business. It's not general education. It's about you and your business. We're going to get all up in your business so that you can have a successful business. So I hope that answers your question, um, Allegra, um, that is the best way I can tell you is to definitely go to check out that course. Okay, quickly, um, Nilisha French, should style shoots always have actual participants? For example, fake bride, groom, bridesmaids. And then um, is it okay that you only have decor photos for the start of your portfolio business social media pages? Absolutely. You don't always have to have, um, you don't always, like I said, you don't even have to have other vendors. You can do the entire thing yourself. 
That's why I started talking about your small and your large. Like you, you typically only, you at least have to have a photographer because if you're not a photographer and can make amazing pictures, I would highly recommend don't do a style shoot off of your cell phone. Okay. Um, but you don't always have to have the big loot. Like I said, you don't always have to do a big style shoot. You can do a small one. Um, and you don't always have to have a bride and groom because it, like, it, again, it goes to what your purpose and concept and intention of that style shoot is. My, a lot of my style shoots don't have a bride or a groom. A lot of my style shoots are specifically about details and how I personalize things. So it's really about the plate setting and the overall color scheme and design. Um, so sometimes there's nobody in it. It's literally just pictures of the design because when I'm focusing on design, that's what it comes as. But when I'm focusing from the planner point of view, I will always have some kind of models because I need the pictures of me capturing putting on the boutonniere or fixing the dress or zipping up her dress or handing her the bouquet because those are showing the elements and the processes of what I do as a planner. So if you're a planner doing a style shoot, then it's really important to have participants because that's what, that's where your expertise is going to come from. Okay. So I hope that answers your question. Um, so yes, it's okay. If you only have decor pieces, you don't always have to have actual participants, but it depends on the direction and the intention that you have for your style shoot. Carrie Ann Penny, is it Clun, Clunjular? I just totally butchered your name. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Carrie Ann Penny, do you pay for all this stuff? I think I already kind of ordered that. Um, I, I, I answered that when it comes to vendors, but when you talk about decor, yes, you, you do pay for it because it's your stuff. There's a smart way to do it and a not smart way to do it. Um, when you're doing a style shoot, don't go and spend money on these expensive things that you are not going to insert into your inventory because it's going to sit there and collect dust. Ask me how I know. I so did that. I went and got the expensive items and I got one to two of them and now they've been sitting in my garage for six years and I never use them. So I wasted money. Um, so I kind of talked about already where I went to Dollar Tree and I just went and got eight plates, eight sets of silverware, eight water glass um, goblets, eight wine glasses, eight champagne glasses. Spent a couple of bucks, used it a hundred times over at this point. Um, and then I utilize um, Sam's Club, Costco's. I go online to Sam's Club or Costco's and order some flowers and put flowers together myself because I'm doing something really simple. If I'm doing something majorly extravagant, I don't have confidence in do myself. I work with a florist and I have her do those things, but I come up with the concept and the design and I'll give them my vase or whatever base I want them to use and they're just doing the flowers. Um, so it really kind of just depends on what you're doing. Um, I would say get yourself what I call a starter kit, um, <clears throat> which is like those basic things you use on every single design. Like you can't have a table without plates. You can't do a table without silverware. Like you can't do, you can't do it. Or you can, but it's not going to be beneficial for you. Let me put it that way. Um, so those are things you would use every single time. So I would invest in that in the very beginning. It's not that expensive. Um, I wouldn't go in investing a whole bunch of stuff um, that you're not going to use. If you're going to build your inventory and you're basing off style shoots and you need to buy more of it than what you would use for your style shoot. <clears throat> I always say have no less than 10 of an item. So if you're doing like the Dollar Tree vases, you need to have at least 10 because you guys got to think about it. An average wedding is a hundred people. And sometimes you do eight to 10 people. So I would, whenever you're buying something, I would get it to be able to fit anywhere from 10 to 12 tables. So if I find a vase that I love, I'm going to get at least 10 of them. Um, if I'm getting votives, I'm getting at least 32 because I like to put three votives per table. That's just a thing that I do. So typically if there's 10 tables and three a table, I need at least 30 of them. So if there's only 12, I'm not buying that item because I'm going to waste my money and my time. And so if, if I'm, if I have a certain votive in mind that I want to use for this style shoe, I won't buy just the three for that table. I'll go ahead and invest and insert into my inventory the amount I'm going to use anyways, because here's the deal. What if I have a bride that immediately says, sees that and she's a wedding with 150 people and she wants those votives. Right? I already have it and I can immediately make profit off of it because I've already inserted it into my inventory and can now charge her the rental rate versus me having to buy it brand new in a sense. When you guys start learning more on how you do things like that, that'll come into play. But to, to, to answer your question, essentially, yes, you do pay. You're investing. A style shoe is an investment in your business that you can get a return on investment on if you present it the right way. Or if you just have that amazing, you know, you could also build, if you're a planner, you don't have to go and buy all this stuff. If you're just doing a planner, you're not doing designs. That's when you work out a relationship with the florist or the designer and they provide all those things. So if you're a planner, you don't have to go do it. But I mean, it's, I mean, it's less than 50 bucks. You might as well spend it to get the 
plates and the silver, all that, and then have your designers deal with all the design concepts. Um, so it's kind of up to you. Okay, Polita Taylor, my girl, Polita, one of my regulars. When doing your first style shoot, is it a good idea to connect with other event planners for assistance? I'm going to say the unpopular thing. No. Um, you don't want to put yourself in a tug of war at the very beginning. Because if you have two planners that have two different companies, how are you guys going to associate who did what? Like you're literally not going to list out that Polita, you did these things and then she did these other things, but you both could do the same thing. So I wouldn't do that unless it's your assistant. Like many people who know me know, but I love my executive director of events, Coco Henry. I'll do style shows for her all the time because she's my assistant and she's going to still boost me and my company. But you don't want to start that tug of war um, at the very beginning. So no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Um, I would never be comfortable doing it with another planner that does exactly what I do on the same style shoot. Um, I work with planners all the time when it comes to weddings. Like if I need extra staff on my wedding, I'll hire another wedding planner to help me. That's totally different. But when it comes to a style shoot, the whole purpose is to give exposure to you and your company and your skill set. So you don't want to have to share that uh, with somebody else. Um, but you do need to have relationships with other co uh, coordinators and planners. Nikki Jenkins said, if you are just starting out, how do you negotiate what is cost effective for you? You look at your pocket. That's what you do. You look at your pocket and you look at your bank. If you only have $50 to spend, you should probably start with a small style shoot and not a huge one unless you already have the amazing relationships that you did in the preliminary part and then it doesn't cost you anything but your gas to get there and the few little items that you wanted to buy. You, a style shoot might cost you 50 bucks or 100 bucks. So it, again, it really just depends. Um, what's cost effective for you is different from what's cost effective for me. I can spend $500 to $1,000 on a style shoot because that's where I am. But if you're just starting out, you might not have $500 to $1,000. So you can't base it on a general start standard of what's cost effective. Look at your pockets and your bank account and then you can decide what you can spend. Don't go spend money that needs to go to a bill or to something else because then that's not cost effective. You spend it on money that you would have spent on extra things at Walmart that you didn't even need. That's the money you spend on investing in your business, okay, when you're first starting out. The, the stuff, you know, that, that, that dress and them shoes and that, that jewelry that you saw on your way out of Ross that you didn't need because what you really need was just some shoes from your kid but you started to pick your, your own stuff up on the way, yeah, return those items and make that your budget. So you have to set a budget for your style shoot that's not going to kill you or put you in the red before you start, okay? You can do a style shoot without spending the money. Again, you have to follow what I said earlier about bend, building those relationships and making it sure it's beneficial for them. Okay, Marcia Simon Alfonso, I'm ready to do a style shoot, but I'm still a student and haven't started my business yet. What's your advice? Do it, do it, do it, do it. Okay, you guys, stop putting limitations on yourself, okay? Uh, do Just because you haven't started your business doesn't mean you can start it by doing that. You guys, I started, and this is the, the thing that I, my story with QC Event Planning School is, and I'll have to see if they'll allow me to do a promo video where I kind of share my story. I started my business in, kind of quietly, softly, while I was still a student with QC Event Planning School. I hadn't even graduated yet. I didn't get my certification and I was still taking courses when I booked my first bride. Okay, you have to decide, are you serious about this or are you doing this for fun? Are you serious or are you doing it for fun? Y'all let me know, are you serious or are you doing it for fun? Put in the comments, serious or fun? Serious or fun? If you're serious, stop putting limitations on yourself. Don't say I have to wait till I get my certification to start my business. Don't say I have to get certified to start my, my, my business. Don't say I have to have a, you know, I have to wait to have my business before I can do a style shoot. Why are you putting limitations on yourself? Nobody else is doing it, so why are you doing it to yourself? Y'all, I signed my first bride before I got my certification. Before I had a website, I booked my first bride. Why? Because it was a referral from someone I worked from a previous career with, and she just noted, she knew my skill set. Skill set. When you're serious about your business, you just make sure you have the legalities in place. So you have, say, a company name and a Facebook page um, and you're certified with the city, but you don't have a website, you don't have business cards yet, you don't have this. That doesn't mean you can't start your business. Do you need all those things for your business? Absolutely. 
But does that mean you say no or you don't do something just because you don't have? Mm. Tis, tis, tis. No, 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 no. Um, no, do it. My first style shoot was actually a design contest with QC Event Planning School that I won. Yay! Um, it was a winter design concept. You had to create a winter tablescape. And um, um, I'll give you guys a secret because you'll probably find the picture. Uh, at that time, I was a single mommy. I was a single mom with two young daughters. See, this was seven years ago. So my daughters were three and two years old and um, I was freshly divorced. Single mama in a one bedroom apartment. Like I'm telling y'all like my for real, for real transparent beginnings. One bedroom apartment, I gave my kids the bed and I had a day bed that was out in the living room that played as also a couch when people came over. That those were my beginnings. So I I now have a different lifestyle. But back then, um, I had a this IKEA table that was for my kids. If you guys know IKEA, you know that bright green kind of kid table. Yeah. So I just bought a linen from Walmart and threw it all over that table and created a dinner for two that was winter themed. Um, it was blue, white, and silver, and I entered into the contest, and then I won. And I used their publication that I won this design contest to attract brides. So y'all better get into this contest when we put the details out, because y'all can use it to your benefit. I used the link from QC Event Planning School that um, I did for this one little table, and that's where I started my journey. I had not yet booked a bride. I didn't even finish my course yet. It was on a little kitty table that I just covered with a linen. I used placemats. <laughs> I used clear plastic plates. Like, y'all, I'm serious. I used my cell phone to take the pictures. But it's the fact that I won the contest with, with QC that kind of added this little she's amazing thing to it. So I highlighted that part and I used it. So, um, seriously, use your dining room table. Use your patio table in the, in the in the back. Who cares? As long as you make it look beautiful and with your intention and, and you have the, the storyline with it, you will be okay. I am not telling you to go spend $500 to do this first style shoot. Y'all just heard me say I use the kitty table and a Walmart linen that wasn't even round, but in the angles that I took the picture, it made it look like it was round. It was a regular dining room table. It was square, but I made it look round. It was just the way I took it. So y'all can start anywhere. Like I, I started from there, so y'all can do it. I promise you. Um, so um, um, Marcia, when you're ready to do a style shoot, go ahead and do it. It doesn't matter that you're still a student. Use what you've learned so far and do it. You guys, it's important to start right away. Let me tell you why. Because you want to be able to go back and look where you grew from. That is your own self-motivation to keep going when you see where you were and where you are now. Because when I see these Facebook memories come up and I was excited three years ago about this thing that I did, and I go, oh, 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 wow, I'm doing so much better right now. I can laugh at myself because I'm seeing my growth. But if I don't see the memory, I will never recognize how far I've come. I will never give myself the recognition I deserve. I would never see why I should keep doing what I'm doing because I would never have anything to compare it to from my past. So stop waiting to be majorly successful. Stop waiting to have all these dots and T's crossed. Go for it. I am a, I'm, I'm a smart risk taker. I'm not just a risk taker. I'm a smart risk taker. I can do so much in my business and I've saved a lot of money and I got to success quick because I started very early. I didn't wait on things to get it done. I didn't wait to have a website. I didn't wait to get a business card. I didn't wait to get a certification. I didn't wait. I just did it. I, I learn from mistakes. I learn when I make a mistake. I go, mm, won't do that again. And now I can excel at that because I made a mistake. Mistakes are okay. You're going to make it. Just don't make some, you know, don't make any real legal bad ones. So I tell people start a business once you have all your legalities done. Okay. Get a company name registered with your city and your state. Um, and get your tax ID, get the legalities out the way, get it, get, get a contract, go. You don't have to have all the pretty, pretty, don't spend $10,000 on the startup brand. Go back to the, how to start a successful business series. Um, if you want all that stuff, go to QC Fit Planning School and go to my three part series I have about how to start a successful business. Um, and, and that goes into all those different things. But Marcia, now, now, do it now, do it now. You're, you, you're ready. If you have your concept and you can go, go for it. Start off with a small one if that's where you feel more confident. 
Marcia also said, what if you're not good at writing um, for blog and publications? Um, there are many people that are, are, are copy. They call them, you write copy? Um, so my best advice for that, because I've done this several times, is you can either go to a website called Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R, -R, um, and you can pay anywhere from... Sorry, guys, I am running out of space on my phone from all these photos I had, so I'm gonna make this quick because it's telling me I'm running out of room. I don't know why I'm doing a live and not saving it, but anyways, let's keep going. Um, so, um, Marcia, if you're not good at writing, you can partner with someone that can write for you as long as you're giving them credit for what they, they wrote, unless they're doing it in a freelance and you're paying them for it. Then you don't have to give them credit for doing it. Um, if you're not good at writing, this is a good time to start learning great ways you can write. No one can write what you write or how you would write that would come off as you. I'm not the best writer either. Um, so I, I kind of write up what I want and I send it to my assistant and to my mom and tell them to reword it. <laughs> Find someone in your family that's, you know, just write out what you would say. Send it to someone who's good at writing and they can kind of just re-edit it, you know, reword it for you to come off the way that you want. So you don't really have to hire anyone. Try and use the resources you already have first before you do that. Okay, so you guys, I'm going to go through this really quickly. I've got one more email and then I will answer questions through text because I want to hold you guys all night. Um, so the next set, okay, this is the last question. Morgan Henry, for the first style shoot, do you recommend doing it outdoor, indoor, or both? Um, and so that is up to you. Uh, it doesn't matter. It, it depends. What, what is your intention with this? Are you, are you, who are you trying to attract? Um, that, that determines if you want, they're all good indoor and outdoor there's really no difference if it's indoor or outdoor it just depends on what your style shoot is about and what you're going for um i'm in texas where a lot of people like outdoor ceremonies so typically when i do a style shoot for a ceremony i'm typically outdoors because that's where most people have it but i've also i mean done some um on the inside i don't really do a lot of chapel um style shoots because there's not much you do in a chapel other than like a little bit of aisle decor and an altar, but it's not, eh, 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 not beneficial for me. Um, so I don't ever do any indoor ceremonies, but I do do outdoor ceremonies, outdoor receptions, and um, outdoor, I um, indoor receptions. I do heavily outdoor, uh, outdoor ceremonies and indoor receptions. I don't do a lot of outdoor receptions because where I am in summertime, it's blazing hot, and so people don't go outside, but for the ceremony, that's 30 minutes. Um, so it really kind of, it depends on your area and what you see is the most popular um, and what's most available. If, if where you are, they, there's no such thing as outdoor ceremonies, then you shouldn't do an outdoor ceremony. Um, if there's no such thing as outside receptions, you shouldn't do an outside reception design. I see it all the time where people do these banquet tables outside, but here's my thing. You guys, when you do these style shoots, uh, this is my last thing I'm going to say, do it, what, what's going, brides can actually repeat um, almost every single venue now will not allow you to have exposed candles. Stop doing style shoots where you've exposed candles because your bride's going to want that and you're going to have to tell her, no, you can't do it. So you just killed the purpose of doing it. Don't do exposed candles because you can't do it in a venue. Don't do, um, these banquet tables when the venues that you're going to be using at only have round tables. Because the design is totally different from a banquet table than it is from a round table. So when I do design, I heavily do 60 inch round tables because that's what's at venues. That, that's mainly what's at venues. I do sprinkle in a few banquet tables because many times venues have at least two or four banquet tables. And I like to infuse that into the layout with my brides. I do some banquet and some round. But for the majority, most venues are only the 60 inch round. So I would base your style shoot on what's actually available that they can kind of uh, replicate. So you guys, thank you guys so, 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 so much for your participation. Stay tuned for part two details that QC is putting together right now. I have one thing to send them and then they'll put the details out. So we should be able to get that out early next week, if not this weekend. Um, I'm so excited for you guys hanging in there. If you had to jump off, I hope you're watching the replay and welcome back on the replay. I appreciate you guys. If you have questions, don't stop. Go ahead and put them here. I always take the evening, if I'm not totally exhausted, um, and the next day or two to go back and look at the questions that I did not answer. And I will type in um, in response to your comments. So don't feel like you have to hold the question. Just let it all out. You can put the questions now. But we're going to go ahead and end so I don't take up too much of your time. 
I'm so excited about this and I hope you guys really learned something. I really wanted to tell you guys stuff that you could apply. And then, um, so you guys can really see how you apply it, um, in my live uh, style shoot, you guys will be able to see that. I'm going to teach you a little bit more of things that come from the event design course that I love, love, love so much. Don't forget, log on to QC Event Planning School and sign up for any course that you want with the special that they have before midnight Eastern Standard Time. I would love to see that you guys are student. I'm very supportive of my students um, through QC, offline, all those kinds of things. Um, I, 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 I just love um, making sure people just create a lifestyle for themselves. So again, thank you guys so much. I really enjoyed this and I'll see you guys soon for the uh, live style shoot by me, Athena Devon. I'll get to your guys' questions. Bye.